Now, Mr. Right Honourable, the Lord Mayor. <coughs> City of Adelaide Council meeting on Tuesday, 28th of August, 2018. The Lord Mayor is in the chair. This council meeting will be streamed live and recorded for publishing to the internet. Please note that an audio and visual recording is being taken of this meeting. This means that your presence at and any contribution you make to the meeting may be collected, used, disclosed or published publicly by the council, including transferring outside of Australia. The red light to my right indicates that the meeting is being filmed and streamed. Council acknowledges that we are meeting on the traditional country of the Kaurna people of the Adelaide Plains and pays respect to elders past and present. We recognise and respect their cultural heritage, beliefs and relationship with the land. We acknowledge they are of continuing importance to the Kaurna people living today. We also extend that respect to other Aboriginal language groups and other First Nations who are present today. The Council acknowledges the vision of Colonel William Light in determining the site for Adelaide and the design of the city with its six squares and surrounding belt of continuous parklands, which is recognised on the National Heritage List as one of the greatest examples of Australia's planning heritage. Let us pray. Almighty God, we ask your blessing upon the works of the City of Adelaide. Direct and prosper its deliberations to the advancement of your glory and the true welfare of the people of this city. Amen. We'll all remain standing in silence in memory of those who gave their lives in defence of their country, at sea, on land and in the air. Members, ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Thank you, CEO. Welcome, members. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Meeting of the City of Adelaide, Tuesday, the 28th of August, 2018. Members, item five is apologies for leave of absence. We have an apology from Councillor Hender, otherwise we have a full complement of elected members in the chamber. Members, item six, which is confirmation of minutes from the 14th of August, 2018. Do I have a mover, please, members? Moved by Councillor Clarahan, seconded by Councillor Martin. Any questions or queries about those minutes, members? In absence of, I'll put them before you. Those in favour to adopt? Those against? Thank you, members. Minutes carried. Members, item seven on your agendas this evening. Granted, as of the 24th of August, we have a number of forums and deputations which I have approved. The first of which is item 7.1, which is Mr. Harrison Raphael, which is a deputation regarding Archie's Clubhouse, which is item 12.7, members on your agendas. Mr. Raphael, uh, welcome to the City of Adelaide Council, and uh, the Council will afford you a period of five minutes. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Good evening, Council Members of the Lord Mayor. My name is Harrison Raphael, and I'm the co-founder and director of Archie's Clubhouse. Allow me to respectively start this by stating the fact that we're not here to debate the existence of the pontoon as a structure. We're here, in fact, to talk about Archie's Clubhouse. Now, Archie's Clubhouse is an interactive multimedia set, which is proudly supported by all things Adelaide. The abstract representation of a house will be filled with art installations from artists from all over the state, as well as this, it will be supported by Adelaide wine, food and everything in between. We firmly believe that we are activating a space and bringing life to an area of Adelaide that goes extremely underutilised, especially at this time of the year through November December when it has so much to offer. 
Not only will Archie's offer exposure for Adelaide artists and as such, we're also creating jobs. And as well as this, we at Archie's have committed to fundraising for various charities, including the Childhood Cancer Association and Motor Neuron Disease, to Boo Sanitary Products, Guide Dogs South Australia, and Beyond Blue and the Black Dog Institute. Our noise management plan complies with the ACC and Environmental Protection Act regulations. We'll have full control of noise levels as well as a phone number available at all times of operations. Any complaints will be handled with the utmost importance and will be liaised with the sound technician to ensure we are complying with the appropriate regulations. As well as this, all complaints will be lodged and made available for viewing for anyone who might require it. Now, I've lived in Adelaide my entire life and the fact that one in four Adelaideans aged between 18 and 25 leave this beautiful city makes me believe that I have to take action and makes me know that there is something wrong. I love Adelaide. I really want to live here. I just want to create an Adelaide that people my age want to live in too. Thank you. Thank you kindly, Mr. Raphael. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Members, our next deputation, item 7.2, is from Mr. Tim Stalsnow uh, regarding the Golden Wattle Park, which is item 12.3 on your agendas. Mr. Stalsnow, welcome. Thank you. Lord Mayor and Councillors, in the next five minutes, I will provide a quick summary of Alsara and its history before commenting on the proposal before you tonight. Alsara is a community association and a hub for female and male non-elite sport at junior and senior level. We have been tenants of Park 21 West for 35 years and have never operated as a private or exclusive organisation. Beyond stewardship of the Park 21 West area, our tenure includes regular working beats, graffiti and rubbish removal, tree and turf planting, landscaping, hand and sprinkler watering, as well as general repairs and maintenance. We enjoy a strong relationship with the council at multiple levels. Associated groups and activities include Sturt Street Primary School, Gilly Street Primary School, Flying Disc Association, that's Frisbee, Gaelic Football, Sturt Football, Rec Link, Sapsaza, SANFL and AFL programs for juniors, women, multicultural and diversity teams, AFL Nines, Auskick, boot camps, sports days and ad hoc community events. It's quite a community. Through Alsara, Park 21 West fosters diversity in culture, ethnicity, gender, ability and age from 5 to 75 years, as well as supporting the disadvantaged and the socially excluded. A great story it seems, but for the facilities. Ground lighting is poor, irrigation is insufficient and unreliable. The change rooms were built over 50 years ago for men's sport. They are hopelessly inadequate and don't meet current or community standards. The facility was condemned in 2010 and the female change rooms for 18 netball teams and a football team is a converted council storeroom of around 25 square metres with no showers. The juniors are forced to use the men's change rooms. Goodwood Road clearway restrictions or bumper to bumper parking means parents and grandparents struggle to safely, safely drop off and pick up kids or cross Goodwood Road. Additionally, there is nowhere for vehicles to turn around especially for the occasional bus. There is no disabled parking. In busy times, parking on South Terrace is required, meaning after dark, some players need to be accompanied back to their cars. There is risk aplenty with the current situation. One of the bleakest parts of the Adelaide parklands is how Park 21 West was described in last week's advertising. The proposal before you tonight is aligned to the parklands and council strategy. It has been developed closely with the council it has included engagement with at least 20 community groups, as well as a dozen formal letters of support from stakeholders. Significantly, the plan includes a new building in the centre of the lease area and well back from the roads. The desired slightly larger footprint over two levels ensures general sports code expectations are met and is no larger than that required for anticipated community usage in the near future. It comprises public toilets and secure storage areas for at least 10 independent sporting groups, including a cricket pitch roller, plus four gender independent change rooms with toilets and shower cubicles, trainers and umpires rooms, and importantly, better accessibility. For example, we have a coach who uses a motorised wheelchair. Building aesthetics are important to the plan and to Alsara. 
with low visual and environmental impact, as well as building height much lower than the surrounding trees. The building will be supported by realigned parklands trail, better lighting, links with Princess Elizabeth playground, picnic facilities, shelters, and raised grass areas. Significantly, a car park will reduce area loading, which can be crazy weekday evenings and weekends. With the planned new hockey facility and increased usage of Park 22, there will be more pressure than ever the, car, the proposed car park will help. The car park could also be used as disabled parking for the Royal Adelaide Show. We currently use the Park 21 West area. Um, currently, the, the, park, uh, the disabled parking is, is on the uh, open parklands. Families will be able to park. They will be able to take out their chairs and their kids in a safe environment and head straight to their sports ground. So perhaps most importantly, a car park will massively reduce our risk. With this proposal, annual Park 21 West visitation numbers are estimated to double from 35,000 to over 70,000 during the next five years. That's annual visitation. If successful, together we will create a valued community hub for the next generation and beyond. Our commitment to you and to the residents of Adelaide is to extend our collaboration with Council through the next phase of detailed planning and design. Thank you for the opportunity to provide, um, provide this deputation. Thank you kindly, Mr Stelsno. Thank you very much. Members, item 7.3, on your papers you would have had a deputation from Mr Roberto Cardoni regarding noise complaints regarding Royal Crow Craig Club and Pinky Flat. Members, you may well know that that deputation has in fact been withdrawn and I will further bring to your attention that within the last hour, myself and the CEO, Mark Goldstone, have both received a letter from the director of the business that operates the Royal Croquet Club, and I will read and I will quote. I'm excited to inform Council the Royal Croquet Club Fringe has entered into a long-term agreement with the University of Adelaide to operate RCC Fringe throughout its North Terrace campus, including many of its iconic buildings and lawns during the Adelaide Fringe period. I wish to personally thank all in Council for their support and efforts this year and I look forward to continuing to work with your Council. Now members, that is an extract from a letter which I will ensure is distributed to all of yourselves. That was sent to the CEO and myself within the last 60 minutes. That explains the withdrawal of the deputation. They have found another venue for 2019 and entered into a multi-year agreement with the, Chancellor of, with the Vice Chancellor of the University of Adelaide and they are very excited about that prospect. Members, item 7.4, Ms Susan Drenth, Deputation in Support of Grant Funding Application, which is item 15.2 in your papers. Ms Drenth, welcome to the City of Adelaide. Uh, Lord Mayor, uh, Ms Drenth uh, was called away about five minutes ago. Her mother was admitted to hospital and she sends her apologies. Understand, thank you for advising your fellow elected members, Councillor Martin. Members, item 7.5, Ms Karen Kent, deputation regarding the City of Adelaide Place brand, which is item 12.1 in your papers. Ms Kent, welcome to City Council. Nice to see you. Councillors will afford you a period of five minutes. Thank you. Thank you to the Lord Mayor and elected members for the opportunity to address you this evening. My name is Karen Kent and I'm the Chief Executive of Study Adelaide. As you may be aware, Study Adelaide's role is to grow awareness and preference for Adelaide as a global study destination, working closely with our education institutions. We also connect with onshore international students through our student engagement program to enrich their living and study experience here in Adelaide. International education is now Australia's third largest export sector and South Australia's second largest export, contributing $1.54 billion in 2017. The economic benefit is not just in fees to education providers. More than 50% is spent in the community on living expenses, including accommodation, retail and entertainment. Last year, there were almost 36,000 international student enrolments in Adelaide from 130 countries. While this diversity in our student cohort is wonderful for their experience, it presents a significant challenge in promoting the destination. As an example, Study Adelaide implements marketing activities in just over 10 international markets because, like everyone else, our resources are not endless and must be targeted to where we believe we can have the most impact. 
For this reason, our ability to leverage global marketing investment undertaken by complementary sectors such as tourism is important. But even more critical is the need for consistency in brand and messaging to have any chance of achieving cut through in an increasingly cluttered and competitive global environment. Study Adelaide adopted the state brand logo treatment when this was launched in 2013. I've been impressed since, since then with the use of the logo by South Australian companies, both locally and internationally. Consistency of branding makes a striking visual impact in situations such as trade and consumer shows, for example. I am therefore excited about the prospect of a city brand that can elevate, elevate Adelaide's profile internationally. While international education, be, with international education being such a e significant economic driver, there is intense competition to attract students, both globally and nationally. This occurs at both the destination and individual institution level. Australia has a strong reputation for international education and is consistently in the top three to four destination preferences alongside the USA, UK and Canada. This presents a significant opportunity for, for Adelaide to continue to grow our international student numbers. However, within the Australian consideration set, Adelaide has a relatively low level of destination awareness compared to Sydney, Melbourne and even Perth. Currently, there is no unifying or distinct destination proposition being used by Study Adelaide and our members on why Adelaide when we are in market trying to grow awareness of Adelaide. There is also no consistent design framework being applied across all channels. We have recently established three messaging pillars to guide our communication with our target audience, being education excellence, wellbeing and career. What we are missing and what we were also working on is an umbrella positioning to encompass these. And then we had a fortuitous meeting with City of Adelaide representatives. I have spent my entire career in international marketing, have heard brand presentations and seen brands come and go. What, what I heard in that meeting completely resonated with me and in my mind, I was hoping my colleagues agreed with me. They did, we loved it. Design for life. The brand story is inspired by the past, but is a thoroughly relevant representation of the Adelaide experience today and what we aspire for Adelaide in the future. It's translatable, which is critical for our activity in China. In a global marketplace where there are thousands of destinations with a similar grouping of traits, consistency of message is essential to provide education agents, students, parents and partners with a distilled concept of Adelaide. Different messages about the same destination erode our collective positioning efforts. Consistency is our best opportunity to get on the radar. Study Adelaide has invested in building awareness of the positive livability factors of Adelaide and our brand research shows this work has achieved the desired result. However, as a decision-making factor, this is being outranked by other factors such as employability and quality of the education experience when selecting a destination. We need an umbrella brand and a suite of materials that talk to our three pillars. We believe that the City of Adelaide has created a brand position based on evaluating what is true, unique and timeless about Adelaide. We feel it can extend to study Adelaide's efforts for the following reasons. It aligns with a student's destination decision making drivers, it is true and defendable and it's a unique position within study Adelaide's, within study destinations. If endorsed, Design for Life will be used by Study Adelaide as the umbrella positioning to succinctly express the variety of appealing attributes about Adelaide. We look forward to partnering with the City of Adelaide to extend their Adelaide City positioning for our international audience. Once again, thank you for the opportunity. Thank you very much, Ms Kent. Greatly appreciate it. Members, item 7.6 is your next, next deputation. Mr Shane Sodi, which is deputation regarding Golden Wattle Park, Moonawira. Park 21 West Community Sports Hub. Mr Sodi, welcome to City Council. Uh, Lord Mayor and uh, members, thank you very much for allowing me to make this presentation. I was fascinated to hear the description of Golden Wattle Park, Murnuwera by Mr Solzner a few minutes ago. It's one of the bleakest parts of the Adelaide Parklands. I was 
privilege to be able to walk through it on Sunday with um, yourself, Lord Mayor. Um, I don't believe that any of the 50 or 60 people who are on that walk would have agreed with that characterization of that park. I certainly, the word bleakest was not used. Um, and nobody on that walk said, if only we had a 150 car park spot put in this park, or if only we had a two-storey building here, how much better it would be. The Adelaide Parklands Preservation Association supports improved facilities for sport on the parklands. However, we distinguish between improved and enlarged. The City Council is being asked this evening to recommend in principle a huge, vastly extended new building coming onto parklands, predominantly for private, not public purposes. Huge is a carefully chosen word. On page 48 of your agenda where this item crops up, you're presented with a diagram of three options. And in the diagram, option one, preferred, looks tiny, looks like a hut, but that is misleading. What is proposed is a two-storey building with a footprint of 465 square metres. On pages that I've provided for members, I've reproduced a photo of a two-storey house marketed by Fairmont Homes, a design called the Eden, which has a footprint of 150 square metres. So three of those, side by side, three two-storey houses, would have a footprint of 450 square metres, marginally less than the so-called preferred option for Golden Model Park. By way of comparison, I draw your attention to the following page of the handout, which is a photo of the sports facility currently under construction in Ellis Park, Tampa Wardley, Park 24. This is a facility with a footprint of 490 square metres, only marginally more than that recommended for Golden Model Park. And above that photo, I've reproduced the council decision of last year that gave approval for a building of the size, which would, and I quote, minimise visual impact. You can draw your own conclusions, but I for one believe that the council's stated intention to minimise visual impact in Park 24 has proven spectacularly unsuccessful. The plan for Golden Wattle Park, Moonoowira 21W, is for facilities of almost the same size. We submit that that is much, much larger than what's actually needed by the public, by the Lutheran Sports Club or other users for sporting events on the adjacent ovals. In addition to change rooms and public toilets, the council is being urged to approve in principle a large, quote, social room, 150 square metres, for fitness classes, team meetings and awards nights. Sports teams should have social events, of course, but why should events of that nature be held on land that is taken away from public access for that purpose? Social events or fitness classes can be held almost anywhere. There are numerous rooms available in the city and suburbs without sacrificing park lands again. Even one of the existing facilities on another park, dare I say it, could be shared for that purpose. Apparently the building must also have an office, 15 square metres, a kitchen and four storage areas, totaling 95 square metres, and I thank Mr Solzner for pointing out that that's for 10 different sporting groups, plus additional rooms for umpires and timekeepers. The total floor space of the change rooms alone is the equivalent of a four bedroom house. And that doesn't include the four amenities areas, presumably that meant showers and toilets, which would cover an additional 100 square metres. None of that is for the public. Oh, and there's public toilets added. The Parklands Authority last week recommended to the City Council that this huge new building should be embedded into the centre of Golden Waddle Park. If the Council tonight recognises this appropriately as an ambit claim, and resolves that the floor space should be scaled back to a reasonable proportions, then the council might also approve in principle a building with a smaller footprint. But if after scaling back the bid for excessive floor space, a second storey is still deemed necessary, then a lower ground level might be sunken, as has been the case for the university sports building in Bullrush Park, which I've also included as a photo as an example. And that brings me to the question of car parking. You're also being asked to approve a new car park for 150 vehicles. But this too is an ambit claim. You have before you proposals for parking limits along Goodwood Road and South Terrace. And I suggest that they might be more appropriately explored as options before we go 
all those in park lands for more car parking. And on the final page, I have what I hope one or more councillors might take up as an alternative motion to address both of our concerns about the building and the car park. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Sodi. Members, item 7.7. .7. Susan and Geoffrey Collins, sale of the Adelaide South East <coughs> Community Centre, which members is item 15.4 on your papers. Susan and Geoffrey, welcome to City Council Chamber. Members will afford you five minutes. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Just in case you're wondering, we are Susan and Geoffrey Collins. Part of the community of the Southwest Community uh, Committee of the Southwest Community Association, or SWICA, as it's known, we address you tonight on behalf of our committee, the Southwest Community itself, and all those organisations and groups who regularly use the Adelaide Southwest Community Centre on Sturt Street. SWICA is aware of a motion on notice for tonight's council meeting, seeking support for the retention of a community centre in the southwest corner of the city either at the present location or nearby. We feel compelled, however, to remind Council of the importance of the centre, not only to the southwest, but to the wider city. It is the only facility in the southwest provided by Council that supports both the local community and attracts other community groups and organisations into this area. Our community already has weathered the disappointment of their nearest library in Grove Street being closed even though it was the second most used library in the city. So we have become very protective of the Sturt Street Centre. The centre is centrally located, well serviced by public transport and positioned exactly where it is needed. It is in a medium density area in the southwest, an area which has been targeted for increased population growth. And this alone makes its protection more important. It's a great resource for diverse users and the friendly council staff and tireless volunteers are there to offer support and advice to all who pass by or drop in. Tourists, locals, community organisations and the homeless are amongst those who make use of the centre's facilities and so many of these have been saddened by the news of its impending sale. Community centres are an essential part of a livable city. If we lose our community centres, we lose our community, our connectivity, and our soul. We know that Council will go into caretaker mode on 18 September prior to the Council elections. Unfortunately, the auction for the property will be two days later on the 20th of September. Such bad timing. We know this means that the Council will not start any new business from 18 September onward until after the election. So it's uncertain what the Council can, could do to assist us if it doesn't act now. We also know that the election time will be followed by a period when new councillors will learn the ropes, then there will be the Christmas close down, and then our festivals early in 2009. By then, it would be too late for our centre. Swicker has been calling on all residents and users of the community centre to ask council to make a formal commitment now or before 18 September when it goes into caretaker mode to keep the Adelaide Southwest Community Centre somewhere west of Walford Street, preferably at its existing location. So we welcome item 15.4 on the agenda, the motion on notice. Many have observed that the southwest end of town has a good feel about it, partly because there are always people there taking an active interest in making, a, making it a place where people feel welcome. Having a central hub has helped embed that sense of strong, supportive community and provides a meeting place for all. It's been suggested that the minor works building at the Ergo Complex could be a substitution for the centre. However, it's not suitable as it would require an expensive major refit and would result in areas too small to cater for many of the existing users, either of the Southwest Centre or the minor works building itself. The amount of anguish the imminent sale of the centre has put to the community is palpable. This also includes nearby businesses, including cafes, small shops, and others. The community centre provides the Southwest and the council with a valuable asset worth protecting and developing. If the Southwest loses its community centre, the community will lose its heart. We appreciate this is a very busy time for both the elected members and also for the council administration, but we urge council to assist the community in this matter. Thank you. 
Susan Jeffrey, thank you very much. Councillor Corbell, depending on how this meeting flows, I may elect to bring your item forward on the agenda, so just be prepared for that. Uh, members, item 7.8, Dr Sharon Mosler, petition. Now, this is discussing the petition which has been provided to you regarding the Royal Croquet Club Fringe event, noting what I shared with you previously, members. Doctor, welcome. Members will afford you a period of five minutes. Welcome to the City of Adelaide Council Chamber. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to speak to you. I think the picky flat or the Royal Croquet Club has now taken away our, our concerns, but I, I represent a small group of <clears throat> North Adelaide residents who live around the parklands and within the, the uh, western part of uh, North Adelaide to some extent, and we are greatly disturbed by uh, amplified music coming from Pinky Flat until 3 a.m. over nine nights during the Adelaide Fringe. It was just this, it was particularly a drumming noise, which of course meant we all lost sleep and our, my neighbors are very concerned. Well, um, this is no longer an issue. And so I just wanted to raise another matter <clears throat> uh, contingent on this. And that was that we didn't want the uh, the license agreement with the Royal Croquet Club to serve as a precedent for other groups. I'm aware that the Archie Clubhouse has uh, applied to uh, use the pontoon for eight weeks in November and December. And I'm asking the council to consider in each case uh, ceasing amplified music from say 11, 8, 11 p.m. They can continue, the people can continue to enjoy the menu, the venue, sorry, the venue without uh, the amplification disturbing uh, the residents of North Adelaide. And I just want to thank you for this opportunity. <laughs> thank you very much, Dr. Moser. Members, that concludes our deputations for this evening. However, item eight, of course, is the petition. So I would need a councillor to move that petition be accepted. Moved by Councillor Moran. Do I have a seconder, please, members? Seconded by Councillor Clareham. Members, I'll put that straight for you for, without debate. Those in favour? Those against? So members, you have carried and adopted the petition which has been provided by community members. Thank you. <coughs> members, Item 19, uh, item 9, 9.1 on your agenda, which is advice of the Adelaide Parklands Authority. Now this is to note members, this is regarding Golden Wattle Park. Do I have a mover to note Apple's advice? Councillor Slama, you're moving. Councillor Corbell, Corbell Moore. Members, any questions or queries? I'll put it directly before you, those in favour? Those against, carried to note. Members, the Lord Mayor's item 10, and I'll just thank you very much, Judy. Members, Lord Mayor's verbal report. Members, I hosted Lord Mayor receptions to celebrate the 140th anniversary of the Independent Order of Oddfellows, IWF, and also Queen Adelaide's birthday. I met with Her Excellency, the High Commissioner to Australia, Dato Suttar Devi K.R. Vasudevan of Malaysia, as well as His Excellency, Mr. Karim Medrek, Ambassador of the Kingdom of Morocco to Australia and New Zealand. I also met with the Indian Consul General and attended a function for Indian international students in Adelaide, hosted by the Consulate in Pilgrim Hall, as well as met with visiting students from Amaji, Japan, and attended Singapore National Day celebrations with the Lady Marys. I gave the opening address at the Homelessness Conference, participated in the Walk a Mile in My Boots event for the Hart Street Centre and attended the Homelessness Week Memorial organised by Homelessness SA. This morning I launched the redeveloped North-South Bikeway along Frome Street to Rundle Street and members can I thank you for your unanimous support towards making substantial improvements to the Frome Street Bikeway which has been welcomed by cyclists, motorists property owners, residents, pedestrians, in fact, all and sundry members, well done to you. I spoke at the 2018 SA Landscape Architecture Awards, opening of opened the Chinese Welfare Association SA Library. I attended the Main Street SA AGM, the first national German genealogy and history conference, and also the topping out ceremony for the West Franklin development on Morford Street. 
We also spoke to UniSA property students about retail placemaking, the property industry roundtable on the topic of path to carbon neutrality in commercial buildings, and provided a keynote presentation at the Australia-Israel Chamber of Commerce Business Luncheon. Additionally, I spoke at the 11th Annual SA Major Projects Conference. I met with the uh, Aquinas College and attended their formal dinner last weekend, and also spoke to the MBA students at Kaplan Business School on Grenfell Street, about 10 gigabit Adelaide, and the role that that transformational infrastructure project members will play in economic growth in the city of Adelaide. I proudly hosted a graduation ceremony for entrepreneurs completing Council's Business of Wellbeing Creative Incubator Program hosted the second session of the Lord Mayor's Cultural Think Tank, as well as hosted a Residence Group Forum, Precinct Forum, and a Lord Mayor's Business Roundtable. On behalf of Council, I attended the Government House reception in honour of Dr Richard Harris. Of course, you'd know members from the Thailand Rescue, or the Thai Rescue, and a reception at Government House of Volunteers. I launched a new uh, park run in Victoria Park, the city's second park run event with more, more than 150 attendees, I attended the launch of the new Topham Mall business called The Noble Gentleman. I attended and spoke at the North Adelaide Precinct Association, the West End Association AGM, and the Fans and Residents of North Adelaide Dinner. Also attended the Grove Street Business Precinct Meeting, Baptist Care Lunch, the Big Issue Big Lunch members. Thank you for supporting the Big Issue Big Lunch. As you know, it's a very important event in the City of Adelaide. Had the honour of representing the City of Adelaide at the funeral of the late Joe Emanuel at St Francis <coughs> Cathedral. Also met with a student group from the Dalian Children's Palace and Councillor David, with Dave, Councillor David Slama, and attended the first South Australian International Music and Art Festival, which attracted delegates from China and was organised by a local company, Guiding Star Group. Celebrated the 20th anniversary of the North Adelaide Community Centre by attending and speaking at the expo hosted by volunteers. Along with supporting me at many events, Lady Maris is pleased to welcome the Dementia Down Under for a tour of Adelaide Town Hall. The Lady Maris also organised a successful dinner for uh, minimisation of suicide harm, of which she is the patron, raising $23,000 last weekend. As part of SALA, the Lady Maris led a walking tour of city exhibitions. She also attended the Australia Day Council of South Australia event called Inspiring South Australian Women impacting the world. Members, this weekend there'll be a significant occasion with the signing of an historic memorandum of understanding between the City of Adelaide and the City of Port Adelaide Enfield. I look forward to you joining me, members, and I encourage members and the public to attend the signing of the clipper ship City of Adelaide at Dock 1, Port Adelaide, on Saturday at 10am to signify the commencement of proceedings. Your, more, your Lord Mayor, members, has been extremely busy. Members, can I have a member move that that be accepted? Councillor Corbell Moore, seconded by Councillor Clara Hand. All in favour? Thank you very much, members. Carried. Members, councillors' reports, reports from councillors, page 9 of your papers. Would any member like to speak to their individual report? And have some sort of a show of hands, I need a move. Moved by Councillor Abiyad, seconded by Councillor Slama. Any questions, queries or debate? Members, I put this matter directly before you. Those in favour? Those against? Members, we carry item 11, which takes me on to item 12, 12.1, City of Adelaide Brand, Councillor Slama. Councillor Milani, you, Councillor Slama, you first, please. You are? Councillor Milani, seconding. Councillor Slama, floor is yours. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Uh, members, I'm very proud of this work that Tanya, Tanya Powell and the team has done. Um, I missed the, the workshop while I was away in China, um, but I've had a full briefing from yourself, Tanya, thank you, and your team. I've got to say, I'm extremely proud of uh, where it's come. And I've got, I've got to remind councillors that, that we all, uh, councillors, contributed to this at the strategic planning day when, when uh, the brand conversation came in to the strategy of, of the city. And so it's, it's been with us for a while. Members, it ticks all the boxes, in my opinion. It talks to the design of the city, talks to the parklands, talks to heritage, talks to the history, and the innovation as well as the arts. Um, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a ground piece of work, it, it certainly ticks all the boxes. Now, I understand there's going to be a gradual, gradual rollout under this um, recommendation. It's not going to be a sudden overnight change where we rebadge all the trucks and trailers uh, uh, working. Uh, gradually and more importantly, there's no budget implication uh, at this point as all the work's been done internally. 
Um, as we have a new government, two members, I think it's very important that we as the City of Adelaide take control of our brand. As we heard the deputation from Karen Kent um, and what it means to have this umbrella brand, uh, what it means to students internationally and the like, I think it's important that we, as a council, take leadership over our brand, take leadership over what our brand means to this city so that when we're at the table with the government, we've got a good position to stand to. Um, I'd like to acknowledge the work of the councillors and the administration that's in recommend the motion to you. Thank you, Councillor Slama. Your motion was seconded by Councillor Maloney. Councillor Maloney, do you wish to speak to this matter? I reserve my right at this stage. Preserving your right. Deputy Lord Mayor, Sandy Virtual. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Uh, look, I'd just like to speak in favour of the motion um, and again reiterate the great work that Tracy and the team have done. Um, uh, and also thank you to Karen Kemp for coming and speaking to us this evening. Um, I've known Karen for a very long time and she has actually spent her whole life in international marketing, so it's great to have someone that has that sort of experience talking so um, uh, positively about the brand work that's been done. Um, consistency of message is really important for us as a city. Uh, when you go outside of the city, there's all sorts of collateral out there and the only way that we can actually move ahead is we have you know, consistent messaging, unique positioning, which I do believe that this brand work gives us. Um, and it also, as you said, David, pays tribute to both our heritage and our future. Um, and I think it's a fabulous piece of work. Thank you. Councillors, do I have any further debate? Councillor Wilkinson. Hi, since I'll probably be in the minority, but I'd just like to speak my view nonetheless. We had two, two sort of approaches put forward to us for this branding exercise. One was uh, designed for life, and the other one was the city in a park. And to me, Adelaide is a city in a park, and all the folk out there get that, and people people, tourists and, and foreign students understand the concept of sitting in a park and that is actually what is really unique about Adelaide, thanks to Colonel Life. I uh, appreciate the endeavour of the design for life is, is giving credit to Colonel Life because the city was designed like that and I think that would be lost on most of the audience in my view. That's my view. Um, so whilst I think it sounds snappy, it could apply to many other sort of offerings apart from the city of Adelaide and I feel it's a bit vague. I think it's smart, it sounds catchy and I can see how they're going to work on bus shelters and things like that, but that's my reservation about it. So I, I would have been quite happy to support City in a Park. I think that's tangible and has meaning for people and relevance to the city of Adelaide. Uh, but I, that's my reservation about this. So I, I, I thought it might be able to support the motion. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Maloney, you reserved your right. You'd like to speak now, then I'd go to Councillor Antic. It's a, it's a question to Councillor Antic. Just want to, something clarified. Councillor Slammer said there's no cost implication for this, but there is actually, isn't there? We've spent $150,000 in the budget. Well, I just wanted to clarify that. Councillor, I'll refer that to the CEO, Mr Goldstone. Thanks, Tracy. Yeah, through you, Lord Mayor. Uh, there is actually provision in the budget for the 18-19 financial year for um, brand work, um, not specifically for um, any um, campaign work, but this actually works across all of the activity through council um, and communications. So there's no additional implication um, in the budget with this, um, with this platform. Councillor, does that answer your question? Uh, that's what I'm going to for. Okay. Now, Councillor Maloney. Oh. Um, thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, I just want to speak, in, I think this is actually a very clever brand um, and I'd like to commend the work that the team have, have done and, and wish them all the best in actually the execution of this in the long, um, long term. I, I hope the brand and the platform has longevity. It's obvious that the key stakeholders that we work with are um, well engaged. And I think it's aspirational, and I think that this is about standing outside. Um, it, it's not about us really liking a brand, it's about understanding what people outside of the city um, look to um, as what Adelaide is and can be, um, and a place where they can participate and get involved. And I think that is why Design for Life is, is very clever. It's got lots of different applications. City in a park is just that. Um, and the applications for this, uh, are numerous and, and wide and varied. So 
I urge everyone to um, support it. Thank you, members. Do I have any further debate? I'm going to make a comment before I hand you back to the mover. Members, I enthusiastically support this because I think that this entity speaks to the past, the present and the future of the City of Adelaide. Design is at the epicentre of everything we do, whether it is heritage, whether it is technology, whether it is innovation, whether it is commercial buildings, whether it is our parklands. And I think it does speak very strongly to Colonel William Light's vision. Councillor Slama, you're summing up on your motion. Summed up. Members, I put this matter before you. Those in favour? Those against? Motion carried. Thank you. <laughs> Members, item 12.2, Councillor Milani, North Adelaide Parking Review, page 16 of your papers. There's a five-part recommend, five recommendation, Councillor. The floor is yours. Move is printed, Lord Mayor. I look for a second of members. Councillor Slama, Councillor Mulani, floor is yours. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, look, first of all, we've, we've had various and numerous and long discussions and debates over this, um, this uh, uh, item, this recommendation, and I uh, acknowledge the work that the administration have, has done to bring us to this place. Um, I recognise that this will take some time and um, that it will be monitored closely as we look to make changes around parking in North Adelaide. Um, and uh, I urge members to support this. Let's get on with it and, um, and get going and give the administration the authority to go and start executing. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Slama, you seconded Councillor Milani's motion. Do you wish to speak to the matter? I reserve my right. Reserving your right, Councillor Moran, and then Councillor Martin. I'd like to defer, uh, move deferral of this uh, matter to look at um, other issues. Um, I don't think it's perfect yet. Um, I can understand people wanting to go ahead with it. And I've got no um, criticism of that. However, um, when you roll this out, it's they're going to be losers in it um, as well as winners. I mean, when a new thing like this is rolled out, it's always difficult to embed it down. Um, we're about to go into caretaker mode, so we can't alter it as we go along. Uh, and the two things I would like to look at is... Uh, Councillor, like, so I'll look for a second oh, to see whether this debate continues. Lord Mayor, I'm happy to withdraw if you want to defer it. I'm happy to... I'm happy with that. Okay. You are? Okay. So in that case, I still need a seconder. Yes, I've got a seconder. Seconded by Councillor um, Antic. So look, can you speak to your reasoning for deferring, Councillor Moran, yes, please? Is a very good body of work and I'm not criticising what it's done, but there are two flaws in my mind that I think we need to tease out. The fact that we're only going to 50% of the untimed, um, I can't see the logic of that when you're just going to jam the untimed bit left. I also um, would really like us to go and talk to Burnside Council, which doesn't seem to have been done, about how they manage their, especially in their built up area, in their um, very built up areas. So look, I urge you that we've got two months of this council. This is a massive change and I totally support the direction it's going in. We must return our streets to the hierarchy, uh, residents, businesses, customers, clients, visitors. We must not become a car park of the city. Lovely to, and I'd park my car there and catch the free bus too. But this doesn't, what we are going to cause some pain, um, and we're not going to be able to rectify that. I think, as another one of the public speakers said, we're about to go into caretaker. We then have a new council. Um, this isn't going to be looked at again for a long time. The nursing staff's already there, so um, <coughs> there'll be no change to the nursing nurses' park, so we're not giving any pain. But I think we, there are a few things. We've got one more council meeting, um, but really I think that this needs a little bit more work on it. It's nearly there, but changing people's ability to park in their streets and, and so forth, um, and timing outside their houses where they've been used to parking, all day, their own cars. Um, I mean, I, I, I think I agree with Sandy um, that I can't, still can't understand why we can't give a sticker to every car. Um, uh, they fit fit in now. Um, no more people are going to people aren't going to suddenly take their cars out of their car park and park on the street. Uh, so I'd just like to defer this for a little bit more thought, and uh, I'd like to speak to. Uh, Perhaps we could bring it up in committee and have another chat about it. I don't want to delay it too long. I realise, and I know Natasha's laughing at me, we have delayed it, but it's really important that it's not one of these things we just put in and then jiggle around with it. 
we put it in, it's got to be right and it's not right yet. So members, Councillor Maloney withdrew her motion that was supported by the seconder who was Councillor Slama. You, know, you are now debating an alternate motion to the defer, which has been moved by Councillor Moran and seconded by Councillor Antic. So members, you're speaking in favour of a deferral or against a deferral. Councillor Antic? I reserve my right, Lord Mayor. Reserve my right. Councillor Martin. Yeah, thank you, Lord Mayor. I'd like to move an alternative motion. You can't move an alternative motion. I'll, I'll move an amendment. You can move an amendment. Yep. I can move an amendment. Just allow me to take government advice about moving an amendment on a deferral motion. Just excuse me. Members, the motion before you is to defer for further investigation. If the amendment that you're proposing, Councillor Martin, is to add verbiage for what the further investigation is to address, that would be appropriate. If your amendment, however, is to create an action to be undertaken, that amendment would not be allowable at this point in time. You would need to vote against the deferral. And if the deferral is lost, then you'll be able to move your motion for a directive active. Okay, so uh, I'll elect to add verbiage to the amendment of Councillor Moran, and that is uh, specifically requesting the administration to investigate granting every, uh, and the words have already been provided, every residential address in North Adelaide, one on-street time exemption permit to be affixed to a nominated vehicle as distinct from and in addition to the current residential permit system, such permits will be issued without fee except for the charge to offset administrative costs and which would not be greater than the current cost of the residential on-street parking permits and uh, asks the administration to propose a plan for the phased introduction by the beginning of 2019 of an on-street permit so in system. Point of order, this is not a deferral, this is a no, no, instruction is... to the council. I want all these things investigated. I'm happy to take their part about stickers on, but to ask them to put, bring in a plan, that's not a deferral. Members, I'll take procedural advice. So, Councillor, I would disallow because your wording is seeking action. So, effectively, you have a motion from Councillor Moran to defer this matter. Well, uh, okay, Lord well, Mayor, then, if, if Councillor Moran's motion is to defer for further investigation, then I am asking that that investigation includes the granting of one on street time exemption permit to be fixed to a nominated vehicle for every residential address in North Adelaide to run concurrently with the, the on-street permit system, for which there will be uh, a response from Councillor, can you preamble your words with, for the consideration of? Happy to do that, Lord Mayor. It's the only way I can permit you to, con uh, permit you to continue. Happy, happy to do that. That was included in my motion when I talked about, um, I'd like investigation into uh, stickers on windscreen for all residents, right. business and so forth. So I think this is, um, we're, I'm happy we're, we're to take that on board. It's a little Lord Mayor. Um, I have the floor. Councillor Moran is interrupting. I'm well, asking. If you're in furious agreement, Councillor Martin, uh, we'll move on. No, I'm asking for the specific words to be included so that Councillor Moran's proposal can be carefully investigated by the administration. Uh, and those words are. Councillor Martin, let's hear the balance of your specific words. Sure, sure. Um, asking the administration to specifically investigate uh, granting every residential address in North Adelaide one on street time exemption permit to be fixed to a nominated vehicle in tandem with the current residential on street permit scheme, and asks the administration to also investigate uh, how we would plan for the phased introduction of an on street permit system to allow North Adelaide business rate payers to park in designated areas. Now, that, that gives some focus to Councillor Moran's... I'm happy to take that on board and incorporate it in my motion. We'll cool. just stop you there, Councillor Martin, and I'll look to the Secretariat. Have we recorded everything that Councillor Martin has just said in the process thereof? Okay. All right, so members, I now need a seconder. You've incorporated? Done. Okay, we move on. Fine. Um, uh, may I speak to that or is uh, that you, not appropriate? You may speak to that. 
Yep, thank you, Lord Mayor. Uh, look, I regret very much that this is being deferred again. Um, th this has moved at such a glacial pace. It, uh, it is, in fact, just on three years since this matter began with a local area traffic management plan, with six public meetings, with countless stakeholder meetings, uh, about four council workshops, about three deferrals, and frankly, people in North Adelaide are very tired of it. It would have been much better had we moved this evening to do exactly what I'm asking to be investigated. That is to give residents in North Adelaide what they want, what they've been asking for for the past three years, instead of instead of uh, uh, deferring yet again. And I am uh, delighted in one sense that we are deferring because the original motion from the administration was to spend another $42,500 on another consultant to investigate the same old problem. Um, I, I will support this, obviously, because uh, those words, uh, I think, will focus uh, that administration investigation. But seriously, Lord Mayor, if it comes back to Council ever, then I would ask that it include a recommendation to support those initiatives. Um, that's up to the administration, but please listen to the people of North Adelaide. It's what they want. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Councillor Clarehan, followed by Councillor Wilkinson. These are the hands that I'm seeing, members. Uh, Councillor Antic, you reserved. Do you still wish to reserve? Thank you, Councillor. <laughs> Councillor Clarehan, the floor is yours. Uh, look, we've been here so many times before. I won't go over the work that's been, that's the, the information provided by Councillor Martin. This just keeps holding up any progress whatsoever. It is a complex issue. The staff acknowledge that. I acknowledge that, but we need to start somewhere. This is quite pathetic, I believe, that we have made no progress in over three years. And I couldn't help but look and say, who was it that said something about the pursuit of perfection hinders progress? And I've looked up and here I've got a quote for you. Um, Voltaire, the French writer said, the best is the enemy of the good. Confucius said, Better a diamond with a flaw than a pebble without. Councillor, I mean, uh, really, Councillor Kamosi, there is absolutely no reason why this should be deferred yet again. We have to start somewhere, and I won't be supporting a deferral. It may not be perfect, what is on offer, but it is a start. For goodness sake. Councillor Wilkinson, thank you, Councillor Clare. Um, I'm very happy to support the uh, deferral um, because what we've been trying to get from the onset, which we said ages ago, was, was the was the time exemption permits for, for, for residents and for that to be available also for businesses. That was still not on this latest recommendation. That's why I wouldn't be prepared to support this latest recommendation. I'm also pleased with the deferral to look at um, eliminating 100%, not just 50% of the um, so of the uh, untimed parking, so that, that we actually deal with that issue properly, uh, rather than just have it concentrated into half the areas and with the for the time that they will hopefully get that. Hopefully this time it'll come back as as we've been trying to get it from the onset. Thank you. Members, I have a motion to defer before you from Councillor Moran, seconded by Councillor Antic. Any further debate? Councillor Maloney? Just Lord Mayor, um, I, I moved it earlier because I did want to acknowledge the work that the administration has done. I, I'm sure you're in the inside pulling their hair out, but um, I'll support um, the deferral. The reality is um, you know, I'm, Sue Claren, I might get you to come and present to my leadership program. Good is the enemy of uh, great is the enemy of good. What? Hang on, good is the enemy of great. Um, but um, I, um, look, Councillor Martin, the reality was you were going to try and change it anyway. So we, we were going to have this conversation, but let's not have it here in the chamber. Let's take it out and get some good advice.
Thank you. Members, any further debate? You've learned world history and philosophy. Councillor Moran, the floor is yours to sum up. Um, I think in this case we need perfection. Um, I don't know if, if, if the motion went up tonight, Councillor Clarehan, you would get what's, what's here. Um, and that's not what the people of North Adelaide want. And we have been asking for that for a long time. I live in the area that's affected and I, I don't really want to be there when this slightly flawed, but still good, but it's nearly there, but it's not there yet. And I think rather than a suck at the sea approach, um, uh, you know, perfection in a diamond might be hard to get, but having an on-street parking thing should not be beyond us. And we are nearly yes. there. Um, we, but if I hadn't moved this deferral, Councillor Clarehan, you, you would be getting a very um, unhappy section of our populace at a time that we can't correct it. And I think if this was further into the back in the term, I think I might have let it go, get through and then we could have moved things to correct it. But it's the dying days to bring, to bring something back. Um, well, I'm happy to remove the deferral and you can put up your motion, councillor, but um, I can count, you clearly can't. Members, I put this matter before you, item 12.2. Those in favour of the deferral? Those against? And a division. Motion carried. Those members voting in favour of the motion, please rise. Councillor Milani, Councillor Wilkinson, Councillor Abiyard, Councillor Slama, Councillor Corporal Moore, Councillor Antic, and Councillor Moran. Members, item 12.3. Declared in favour of 12.2 members. Item 12.3, Councillor Slama, Golden Wattle Park, Minuwira, Park 21 West Community Sports Hub. The floor is yours, Councillor. You are? Moving as printed, Lord Mayor. Do you wish to speak to the matter, Councillor? Yeah, we need a second. Councillor Maloney, the floor is yours, Councillor Slum. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Uh, Lord Mayor, I'd like to move the recommendation as per previous motion that, uh, that I'd like to note that um, Apple endorsed this recommendation. And is it in fact a recommendation that takes us to only the next steps at this point? Takes us to community consultation, community engagement, and a detailed design. And if we take a look at the entire landscape, and bearing in mind that we're moving on to 2020, in a, in a field where I'll, I'll speak to you as a father of a teenage daughter who's just gone through female sport and the challenges that the facilities and that it faces for, for juniors, especially female juniors, it's, it's a challenge. Now, this project takes into consideration a whole raft of um, sporting participation. We heard um, before about netball, football, cricket, frisbee, several schools, SNFL, SANFL, the AFL, et cetera, et cetera. What's most exciting is there are 40 new female and junior teams waiting to use these facilities, waiting for fit for purpose facilities that in this day and age of 2018 will accommodate the bare necessities for those. And if we didn't, if we didn't have that, how could anybody enjoy the parklands? And how could they enjoy them safely, Lord Mayor? So my point here is that um, we, we should look at this and take uh, into, into consideration the community engagement and the, uh, uh, the, uh, those recommendations that will come back to us later. If we look at what this project addresses, it addresses the lighting, irrigation, picnic facilities, play facilities, mixed field uses, and more, most importantly, the parking. If you, look at a, if you look at the visitation of this park, I understand that area is visited by approximately 35,000 visitors every year. That's, that's a number of people on, a, on an area of 300,000 square metres. It's not a small park, it's, it's quite a large park. And I'd also like to take note that on Greenhill Road, um, where there's currently a little bit of parking happening, the state government is squeezing the, um, the building of clear ways, which will, which, will have, which will force those cars off Green Hill Road. Um, and on, on, the topic of, um, on the topic of parking, Lord Mayor, I've got a couple of numbers that I'd just like to share with you elected members. And there are a thousand spaces um, that basically in Park 22 that were used for the show parking. Now the extension, the recent extension of the netball court, so two, so 200 of those parking spots being removed, bringing us down to about 800 spots. Now the equivalent of 800 spaces is used currently by netball users on a, on a weekly basis. 
And the council endorsed plan for 22, Park 22 provides 580 spaces, down from 800. So that is a reduction already. Park 21, at this point in time, has no existing car parks. It pro pro proposes. Councillor, that's your three minutes. Can I go for another two? Or Members, one? I look to you. Yes, you have general comfort of the room. Councillor, you have an additional two minutes. Thank you, Lord Mayor and members. Um, so, uh, uh, 150 spaces proposed in this um, uh, recommendation. That brings us to 580 plus the 150, that's 730, and a reduction of only 70 spaces from what it was. With the increased participation, if you weigh it all up, Lord Mayor, that is a significant, um, not a significant um, um, uh, change. In fact, 70 spaces, only 9% of the existing. So the APLA seeks to reduce by 5%, and here we actually reduce the car spaces by 9% already. Um, yeah, so that's, that's it there on the car, car spaces. Uh, Lord Mayor, I do want to also acknowledge that the, this amount of work is, is, is a good example of our council engaging with stakeholders, working with the community, working with ratepayers, working with the licensee to achieve what I think is a really good result overall. I, I highly recommend this recommendation to you. <laughs> Councillor, your seconder was Councillor Milani. I'm going to reserve my light. right. Thank you, Lord Mayor. You're right. Thank you, Councillor. <laughs> Councillor Wilkinson, followed by Councillor Antic. Councillor Wilkinson. Uh, yes, I'd like to move an amendment to my committee Can do. We'll put that on the screen, please. Could you read that amendment, please? And I'll look for a second. Uh, we got the change words in a different colour. Or... So my amendment sees uh, the adding of the words on paragraph two. Can you read that? If you could read those changes to your fellow elected members, councillor. But that's not the um, what I emailed first. That's existing. Okay, that's being typed in. Maybe in the meantime, I councillor. It to facilitate I understand, so, councillor. It's happening as we speak. So, if you maybe in the interim, are you able to read out what your changes are for the benefit of your fellow members? Yes. Um, in paragraph two, that uh, we specify that we support option one with an underprofit lower level to provide guidance to their community consultation and, importantly, the proponents of the scheme who I've met with this afternoon on site, looking on site, are uh, comfortable with that approach, um, the, uh, which is cost neutral, um, the, uh, and then slight variation to the um, car parking saying up to 150 be helpful with this. They're, that's why I provided it earlier today. I understand, Councillor. You don't have a copy of what you sent forward, clearly? <coughs> So in that way, Councillor, you can speak to your changes as they are being typed in, then I'll get you to confirm they are correct, and then I'll seek a seconder and you can debate your amendment. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Moran. So in paragraph two, insert an undercroft lower level and after the word corporate, which we've got, paragraph three, amend the words up to 150 vehicles and potentially starting with parking inside of an unsealed road linked to the new building, subject to blah, blah, blah. Paragraph four, add, and all these things I've discussed with, with Tim on site. Yep, they are being captured, can The new car park will only be available on weekends and after 4 p.m. weekdays when they require it with boom gate or parking control, and I understand parking control on the boom gate is preferred, uh, to prevent this being used for general commuter parking outside these times. 
Okay, so members, those changes are being recorded as Councillor Wilkinson speaks. For this matter to proceed as an amendment, I'd need a seconder. Do we have one? Councillor Moran, Councillor Wilkinson, floor is yours to debate your amendment. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, the, uh, the report uh, in the rationale says that a undercroft solution is not recommended in this instance because it is in the middle of a large park. And that is where, and I, I was there with the proponent looking at it, and we see what the thing in the West Parklands is looking like, where it's a full two-storey out of the ground. It looks terrible as compared to the University of Adelaide Pavilion, which is bedded into the ground. It's a beautiful elevated pavilion, completely different look, and, uh, and everyone gets that. And um, uh, if, if you took the rationale that just because it's in the middle of a large park, therefore two-storey complete is okay, then you would apply that every time. You would never, you'd actually never see these facilities sunk into ground, so to present as a nice pavilion thing like the university. So I'm disappointed that that, that sort of recommendation is there. Proponents are, are, um, um, uh, are ambivalent to the thing. Um, so, um, uh, you know, they might just prefer to have six biscuits rather than five type thing, but, but there, there are ambivalent to it and, uh, and uh, there's a preference for the look of the University of Adelaide Pavilion as it's been built, which is a great solution and that should be the model that we're pursuing. Our parklands deserve that. And, um, and the proponent from the uh, uh, Parklands Association, I thank them for providing those photos for people to see the visual difference between the two. And, uh, and we all understand and get the importance of improving the facilities and that's why my motion allows for them having the large building provides all the facilities that they need and that's provided they comply with the codes and stuff like that. That's really all that matters that would have to anyway. It's going to have a lift in any event. So, um, uh, you know, it could be a, a very good solution. And it's important that you don't have the proponents having their architects going and doing a full-blown two-storey scheme that then goes out to public consultation and then, and then they have to change the design. Better that we give them clear guidance now so they can get it right in the first instance. Um, so I hope members can see um, that there's um, uh, good rationale for, for adopting this amendment. Now, Councillor, before I go to your seconder for your amendment, which is Councillor Moran, if you could just please confirm for your fellow members that item or paragraph four on your amendment, was that to replace the pre-existing text or to be an addition to the pre-existing text? Oh, thank you. No, that will be to follow that text. It is to follow that text. Yes. Okay. It's an so, thank you. So we will correct that, and it will be the full text of paragraph four with your inclusions following. That's it. Screen is correct now. Yes. Thank you. So, members, you're clear what you're now debating. Councillor Moran, you are debating Councillor Wilkinson's proposed amendment. The floor is yours. Well, I'm happy to support uh, to second this, as it was really the will of APLA that um, this building was sunk down as the university building was too. Um, you know, it is a privilege to build on the parklands and it should be done with the least impact. And that's what APLA thought, felt. It was a little timid in its wording, APLA but um, we have our limitations. But that was the predominant feeling that perhaps this should have been, should have been looked at. It amazed me that it's never, it's never really looked at. Um, of course it's more expensive to do that, but if we were a little bit stricter on what's put in our parklands, then um, the developer would expect to have to do something. Um, they've done a good job and they have um, got close to replacing the existing footprint. So there's no uh, criticism of the, uh, of the developer in this case at all. But um, at the same time, I think we could look at um, sinking this building down a bit. We've had pictures of, of what it looks, what buildings look like in the parklands that aren't blended into the landscape. So um, I'm, ha I'm happy to support this. Thank you, members. Now, the next speaker is Councillor Antic, followed by Councillor Corbell Moore. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I, I, um, I, I have to say largely sympathetic to that. And particularly, well, actually, all three of those amendments, also the latter two. But I'm concerned about the necessity to sort of design these on the on the on the death door. Um, I mean, this has gone through Apple, and Apple I haven't. I mean, I, I accept that it may well have been the tenor, but the, the recommendation was as originally printed. 
Um, I guess this is a question to the administration as to whether or not the concept of an undercroft parking has been discussed with the lessees and uh, whether or not that's that's been broached. And I mean, we might be approving something that they won't be able to ever get funding for. It's significantly more expensive to build of that nature. I would hate to see it held up um, for that, but I'm, I'm sympathetic to the issues. Of, you know, I agree about the, the University of Adelaide building looking better. Thank you, Councillor. We'll take that as a question. CEO. Claire, thanks. Uh, through the presiding member, um, undercrofting is a really helpful technique to uh, minimise visual impact on the parklands and we certainly make sure that we talk to all proponents of parkland buildings to look at ways to minimise footprint and mini minimise visual impact. Um, last Thursday night, APLA did discuss um, the, um, the requirement to perhaps um, undercroft and from memory I think the motion didn't get up however the proponents certainly indicated after the meeting that they were happy to take that on notice they noted the strong desire of APLA um, to look for ways to ensure that the um, visual impact of this building is mitigated. Councillor, does that answer your question? Well it, it does except I mean if this concept is to be approved uh, I mean, what's the availability for it to be a, I suppose it becomes a formal motion at council after that, if it becomes cost prohibitive. Um, I guess that's, that's a matter council could reconsider. I'd, I'd hate to see the, it's a, del, it's a delicate act because I'd hate to see the whole thing uh, tipped over as a result of that, uh, but I accept that it's a bit of visual impact. Um, yeah, I, I mean, well, that, that is still a concept plan in any event, I suppose. Okay, Councillor, I'll take that as a statement. Yeah. Okay, so members, uh, CEO, are you wishing to comment on this matter? Well, three, Lord Mayor, there is a potential for us to consult on both options because we're only just consulting and um, there is no harm in doing that and you can be fully informed when it comes back. I understand the intent, but there is an option to do that. Um, you, yes, CEO, thank you. Um, uh, but of course, the motion will be the motion. Uh, in terms of providing direction on that endeavour, but thank you for those comments. Um, Councillor Corbell Moore, thank you. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I was at APLA um, just a few nights ago when this was discussed and it, it was debated, it wasn't without some discussion and from memory, um, two people on APLA didn't support it and five did. Um, and it was largely around the footprint um, there were issues around the footprint, significant concerns, um, and we did we did discuss that it would come to council and it's council's decision as to how it's handled from this point forward. I think, and I did as well, weigh into the discussion and indicate that I had um, strong sentiments around the desire to lower the property so that the, the development, whilst it might be two storeys, if you can sink it down, it might cost more, but the visual impact is lessened. This tightens up the original recommendation, which already had in there the, the design would be incorporating landscape and architectural treatments that reduce the visual impact of the building. So this just takes it that next level and seeks the proponents to really, in their design, which they're going to bring back, the concept plan um, and draft building design for the next council will include that lowering of the building to reduce the visual impact. So on that basis alone, in particular, if it is affordable, um, and I would like to flag with the administration in your consult consultation, if it, is, if it is working out that it's looking like it's not affordable for the proponents that the council, whether it's this council or the next council, is notified of any um, issues as they arise. Um, I think it's good also to tighten up um, the wording around parking and I don't have an issue with the commuter parking out and tightening up the requirements around that as well because we wouldn't want to see it being used for commuter parking. Um, so I commend to Councillor Wilkinson for his amendment. Thank you. Okay, thank you Councillor Corbell. More members, you are debating an amendment put forth by Councillor Wilkinson. Councillor Abia. Um, thank you, Lord Mayor. I am um, sympathetic and, and supportive of Councillor Wilkinson's uh, amendment. However, I've just got a couple of questions. Um, I'm assuming that, um, to the administration, I'm not sure if you've got this answer, but I'm assuming that the proponent of the applicant for this specific uh, application hasn't quite costed this potential option. Is that correct? Okay. So, um, in, a in, uh, in a rec from the CEO just before, do you think this motion 
um, from Council Wilkinson will give you the ability to consult on the two options and provide an opportunity for the proponent to at least be able to cost the project because there's no point of going out with two options if one of them is unaffordable um, and it's just going to be a waste of time. So is there a need there to potentially look at the option to cost it or at least have the flexibility there to have the two options consulted on? Uh, so then there's a determination made that way. Because otherwise it's just a waste of time to consult on this and it's not affordable. Councillor, the motion is relatively clear as in terms of what it's asking, but I will take that as a question through to the CEO. CEO? Claire's going to attempt to answer next. Uh, thank you to the presiding member. The challenge at this point is there's no detailed design to enable full costings to be undertaken. This is purely seeking APLA and council um, feedback on, on the footprint and the use of the space. Um, that's, what, that's the point we're at, the very early preliminary okay to provide some certainty to enable um, early community engagement. Once we have that, we would bring it back to council um, and APLA, further discussions would take place based on what the community feedback says. Um, we would then bring through further recommendations to tighten up the proposal. That will then go um, out to formal design. With that in mind, um, I'd ask personally, Councillor Wilkinson, are you open uh, through you, Chair, uh, to potentially allowing for both options to be consulted on? So the proponent has got an option to, uh, to be able to cost it. Otherwise, I, I won't be able to support this. Councillor, you're suggesting a variation? I'm suggesting maybe he's prepared to take a variation on board. If not, I'm happy to not support it, and then I'll flag moving an amendment. I've discussed it with the proponent. It's comfortable whether I've had curious advice. It's cost neutral. Okay, sorry, Councillor, is that a yes or a no? No, it's a no. Yeah. 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 Members, sorry, I can't hear the debate. Councillor Wilkinson, was that a yes or a no? That was a no. Okay, so Councillor. So, uh, yeah, speaking, no. I was speaking against this. I get, I get the feeling that the uh, the applicant is is not yet haven't had the opportunity at least to cost it and understand the impact that this could have. But also, it's a waste of time of process. I mean, in essence, what we're suggesting here is by design of council, we're going to go out to public consultation. I do think it's a good idea, uh, but then if it gets consulted upon and the consultation comes back with a yes, and then it gets costed and the applicant cannot afford to do the project for whatever reason, be it safety or cost, uh, then we're going to have to start the process again. So I would like to at least have the flexibility, and that's why I'll be voting against this and I'll ask members to not support this either. Uh, because in essence, it would be good to have the two options out to be consulted upon. Uh, it's going to be the same cost at the same time. They'll both come back. It will give the opportunity for the proponent to be able to look at both options, cost both options, present both options to council, and then council can make a decision. Um, so I'd ask members to please um, not support this motion and potentially look at an alternative if this was deferred. Okay, so members, you are debating an amendment. The amendment is put forth by Councillor Wilkinson. Councillor Mullally would like to speak to the amendment. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Look, I concur with um, what Councillor Abbey had um, suggesting there. I think it, this is going out for consultation, number one. Let's not, you know, this is, this is what the process is all about. But I think it's unfair to, A, change the requirements um, uh, based on the, the, you know, what Councillor Antic was mentioning without discussing it with the proponent. I also think it's unfair to say that the proponent is happy with these um, amendments because when I spoke to the proponent this afternoon, um, that wasn't quite the case. And actually, it's not necessarily the point we're discussing. It's the boom gate on the parking and there's a few other elements that, that they weren't necessarily um, uh, briefed on or had a lot of detail about. I also think it's unfair to say that it's affordable because we don't know. And that's, that's you know, Councillor Corbell and Councillor Wilkinson, you, I, we can't say that with um, convincingly. So I think we need to, I urge you to vote against the amendment um, and let it go out to consultation as it stands. We will get the feedback. I'm sure that will be part of the, the conversation that we'll have. Um, we welcome the feedback. We've already heard different sides of the debate tonight, but let it go out for consultation as the proponent um, has submitted to council. This, you know, it goes on, you know, with the master plan developed since 2014. It's, it's a conversation what we have regularly with people that are trying to do good by creating infrastructure for sport um, in, in, uh, for, for kids and people to play in the parklands. And we make it really hard for them. I think we just have to have 
um, a conversation and be fair. It has to be um, properly consulted on, but without us meddling and changing design and, and bits without even going to them, it's not fair. Thank you, Councillor Morani. So, members, do I have any further debate with regards to Councillor Wilkinson's amendment or proposed amendment? I put you before Councillor Wilkinson. No, Lord Mayor, I put my hand up uh, about five minutes ago. You just didn't seem to see it. Um, look, I will support this uh, amendment. Th this is not some off-the-cuff silly idea that Councillor Wilkinson has come up with. It has been discussed at length at APLA, and there was a view at APLA that something like undercrofting would uh, in some way diminish the visual impact of the design. Now, this is an in-principle decision. It is not a final design. It is simply saying these are the kinds of things that we'd like to see incorporated in it. And after that, there will be a public consultation, at which point the proponents can say, look, uh, we can't do this, the cost is prohibitive, or alternatively, they may say, yeah, we can do that. As I understand it at this time, there isn't even a funding proposal on the table. There is no real idea of where the money is going to come from. So at that point in time, at this very early stage, to be expressing a preference for the design of the building, having been taken through uh, the design of what's appearing to be a not so attractive building at Park 24 seems to me to be a fairly prudent thing to be doing. Now, I pay full credit to Alsara. I think they are an outstanding tenant in the parklands. They are putting forward a proposal that will not only uh, improve the amenity of the, uh, the space for the people who use the area, but they're proposing to expand usage to include more junior sport, more women's sport. They deserve uh, our praise and thanks. But uh, let's just say at this time what we prefer to see. And then if at some point down the track it's not possible, then that will be apparent to all. But this kind of mamby pamby, I don't know, like this design, but I, I won't approve it. I mean, it's, it's a nonsense. Just do it, get on with it, and go to consultation. Exactly. Thank you, Councillor. Um, can I ask a question, uh, Councillor Clary? Yeah. Certainly. Oh, are you going? No, Councillor Clary, I just wanted to ask administration about um, an establishment of a car park in the park. And can you please, I know that it's a gravel car park off an unsealed road. Um, and obviously it services, the road services the location of the club rooms. And there was a suggestion in the original motion that this car park of 150 spaces be available from 8am to 6pm which for three hour parking, which I find absolutely remarkable. But my question really relates more to when was the last time we introduced car parking of this number into the parklands? Take that as a question, CEO. Thanks, Cliff. <laughs> Uh, part 22, um, that was uh, endorsed by council earlier this year. Um, part 25, the SACA redevelopment has um, also undertaken um, some car parking in that area um, and uh, the treatment of that is, in terms of look and feel is similar to what's proposed here. That's all I can sort of think of top of mind, but I can say. So, so what quantity of car parking have we then introduced given what you've just told us? I'd need to get further Roughly. detail on that. I don't have that answer. Because this one is for 150. Would the others be of similar size? Park 22 was 580 car parks and about 150 for Park 25. Thank you. Um, what I'm seeing is this huge change in approach. I recall when I first joined council, that car parking on the parklands was totally discouraged and that parking around the edge of the parkland was encouraged, even if that required changes to the parking controls around the parkland. So obviously 
APLA have had a change of heart and they're encouraging car parking for any new sporting facility on the car park. Is that correct? Through the presiding member, no, the, the long held principle of minimising car parking on the parklands is, um, you know, present in every conversation. Um, we look to remove old car parks and turn that back into a green space. Um, we also make sure that we do traffic studies. Um, part of the challenge we have had, particularly in part 24, has been the volume of um, participants traveling to that area by car. Um, and the intent in this instance was to future-proof the use of Park 21 West by um, ensuring that um, people who use Park 21 West will have access to car parking. Do we know how many car parks are located around the park? On the on-street parks? I don't have that number, councillor. But what we're saying is that it's totally inadequate for this particular facility. That's correct. Okay, well, I'll, I'll follow up. Um, is it possible to take this in parts? Because I, told, I support um, the option one as being presented by uh, councillor Wilkinson uh, and, and of course the, um, the new facility. Uh, and I certainly applaud uh, the increased use of the parklands, but I personally am very concerned about the increase in the number of car parks on our parklands when there is, I believe, ample parking around the edges. So is it possible, Lord Mayor, to take this in parts because I don't wish to support uh, the car parking on the parklands? Okay, so Councillor, I would need to look to the mover as to whether the mover is comfortable of the amendment as to whether this matter would be taken in parts. But maybe before I do, just to assist the administration, Councillor Clarehan, if I can. Um, as Councillor Slama preambled at the beginning when he moved the substantive motion, there are some 1,000 non-delineated car parks currently on Park 22. The plan which has been approved for the netball and hockey delivers 580 delineated car parks. There's a, a substantial reduction. There's a substantial reduction from approximately 1,000 non-delineated car parks on Park 22 to some 580 delineated car parks on Park 22. So you add 150 to 580, you've got 730. You are then 270 car parks less than what you've got today. So that's the mathematics of this. So members, I hope you're all aware of that. That's what Councillor, that's what Councillor Slama was sharing with you when he preambled this matter. There is more than a 25% reduction across both Park 22 and Park 21. The difference is non-delineated versus delineated. Uh, Lord Mayor, could I just ask if how many of those are available from 6 a, uh, sorry, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m.? That's a very valid question. See you. I'll just take advice, thanks. Um, it's only used by the licence holder at the moment, it's my understanding. So there's so people are not able to just drive in and park for three hours, go off and do something else. And then come back. It's only how do we how do we control that through With the boom gate owned yeah. by the sporting facility, uh, controlled by the sporting facilities. It's a it's a gate with a key. It's not a boom okay. gate. Fine. Thank you, Lord Mayor. For okay. Clarifying that. Thank so, you. Yeah. Thank you, Councillor. Now, members, do I have any further debate on Councillor Wilkinson's proposed amendment? I'll speak to it if I could before I go back to Councillor Wilkinson to sum up on his proposed amendment. Uh, members, so you're clear on the issues in terms of what you are debating here, is that now we're clear on the quantification of the car parking. We're now really talking about undergrounding versus or undercrofting versus not undercrofting. And we're talking about parking controls which would limit access to the said car park. Council Wilkinson, it appears, is favourable to the 150 car parks and re realises that they have a need. 
uh, Councillor Wilkinson through his amendment, from what I gather, is looking to just control the use of the car parking so it's not used for day parkers. Is that my understanding? So, Councillor Wilkinson, I'll put your proposed amendment back to you to sum up. Uh, thank you, Keith. Um, just in summing up, um, in discussing with the proponent, they didn't actually ask for 150 car parks, they actually came from our administration. Um, half that would have sufficed, but they're allowing for future demand and stuff like that. So that's my soft wording on that, was that you could just start with a road and then expand it, you know, and it's allowing that, because they don't really need all of that all at once. It's all about just keeping up the loss of parking from the uh, from the oval, from the from the uh, um, Adelaide show, which has got nothing to do with them, you know. So it sort of serves to their needs like that. But then I, I've sort of softly worded it to give some wiggle room on that. Um, the um, uh, the it's imperative, and, and they agreed about not having commuter parkers just parking in there. When the parklands is not meant to be just a car park, but we do acknowledge, you know, the increased need that they they have. In, in the peak times, which is after school on a weekday and on Saturdays, that's when the peak's there and, and, and they're completely on board with that. And, um, and, uh, uh, and the undercroft is, is something which there seems to be a massive misconception amongst everybody that it's enormously more expensive. I don't know why people just don't believe me when I say I've spoken to quantity surveyors and people with balance, I know, you know, and, and we discussed, you know, um, Tim and I discussed how the Adelaide University one, how they get soil they excavated for the undercroft, they then used for mounding. So then they didn't have to cut the soil or take it away, they actually used it for the mounding, and the mounding actually made nice grassy slopes that people sit on. So it worked really well, so they didn't have to get rid of all of the soil, you know, and it actually made for a better thing and a shorter flight of stairs. You know, when you got huge Roman steps to get to, to a thing, you know, high on top of that chandelier. You know, it's just a short flight of stairs onto a in one and a half metres. It's a much nicer pavilion to have in a park lands. <coughs> and uh, so, uh, and, and, and why why go out in the community consultation with a possible two story thing? We know what, how it ended up with a commons thing in West Park lands. And if anyone thinks that looks good, well, then, <laughs> but you know, there's your evidence with that how the full two story thing it, it looks you know, by comparison. So. We've got a chance to get this right and not not be wasting the proponents' time with their architects and stuff, you know, developing up design when we can actually provide some clearer guidance at this point. And you know, there's obviously not everything the Parkland Authority would want in terms of minimising the footprint and things like that. But but by putting that extra floor level underneath the thing and burying it into the ground, it's a good it's a good way of meeting the greater needs of the users. As well as the desires of the broader community and the users themselves to have actually a nice, nice looking pavilion that sits sits well in the park lands. Thank you. So members, you're voting on a proposed amendment put forth by Councillor Wilkinson. Those in favour? Those against? Yeah. I cast in favour of the amendment. Carried. Members, that's the amendment. You now have a substantive motion as varied. Councillor Slama, do I have any further debate, members? I'd just like to sum up, Lord Mayor. Um, I, I think that what we're doing here is being a little bit too prescriptive. I'm a little bit worried about safety effects. I'm thinking about practicalities, and I'm sure that the design team have already addressed all of these things in their consideration. And here we are simply saying that you've got to build lower croft. We're not giving them the option to, we prefer lower croft, which is what I was hoping we could amend it to. But um, here we're saying we need to go lower croft. And um, I, I wouldn't like to be on the receiving end with a bunch of kids running down the stairs on in the footy boots, slipping, cracking their heads open because the stairs going, concrete stairs leading to a lower croft. <coughs> Thanks. Summed up, so members, I put this before you as amended. Those in favour? Those against? Carry. Members, I now look to you for Members, I'll deal with items 12.4, 12.5 individually. I will then look for I will on block or look to on block items 12.6 through to 12. 
12, but we'll deal with that shortly. Uh, members, 12.4, Residential Growth Action Plan, which is page 57 on your papers. Do I have a mover? It's a two-part recommendation. Councillor Milani, you are? Please. Moving is printed. Do I have a second? A Councillor Corbell Moore. Councillor Milani, do you wish to speak to this matter? No, no, no. Okay, Councillor Corbell Moore. Just briefly, Lord Mayor, there's some um, important aspects that I wanted to bring to the attention of Council. Um, de developing livable streets for our people to be attracted to the city, I think that's important in line with our strategic plan. Advocating to reduce entry costs to city apartment living, very, very important. Advocating for, um, for example, looking at the um, ta housing taxation and stamp duty concessions, that's really important. I wouldn't have been able to afford to buy into the city um, and my apartment in Ergo if I didn't have that. So I think that's really, really important. Um, encouraging dwelling diversity, um, adaptations of existing buildings that are not being used at the moment, um, ensuring that we have affordable housing. All of these things are within this plan. I think it's really, really good. I just wanted to say thank you to the administration and um, I think it fits really well with other strategic plans which are even within these papers tonight. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Members, do I have any further debate? Councillor Martin. Lord Mayor, look, I will support this, but I, I do have reservations given that it's uh, it includes our promotion of the five-year uh, rate holiday for owner-occupiers buying off the plan. Um, we had great intentions for this when we agreed to it. Um, it was going to drive residential growth to our target of some 30 or 40,000 people living in the city in the next decade. But growth has remained pretty much stubborn at uh, about 400 a year. Um, we've had 23 people take up this offer. And in the meantime, the apartment market is softening, as our administration says in paragraphs 9 and 10 uh, at page 60 there are already vacant apartments in completed buildings and there are about 310 on the drawing board which is about half of what was there a few months ago because projects are being cancelled so um look i will support it but in a softening market i think the, the best thing that council can do is to continue to offer the rate free holiday but just let it quietly end on june 30th because um, to promote it, to continue to promote it, would seem to be a waste of money. Members, do I have any further debate on this motion? Councillor Wilkinson. Um, what's happened with the planning changes, and speaking with a, uh, a developer value of a friend of mine today, is that land prices through the new push to increase city living and height limits and stuff under the John Rowan legislation have just been pushed up abnormally in certain locations. So it's the site on the corner of Prime Street and North Terrace. They paid $10,000 a square metre for that land. So the, the landowner that sold the site to the developer of that uni, affordable uni housing development uh, quadrupled their money. Councillor, with the greatest respect, what does so, that have to do with this motion? Well, it just shows that the market forces eclipse any of council's initiatives. And what happens is any endeavour we get to make housing more affordable, landowners jacking up, then what they're asking for their land gobbles up much of our good endeavour. Um, that's, what's, that's what's been happening. And that's one of the reasons why things are not as affordable as they are, because the developers actually have to pay more for the land because the zoning has been pushed up. So that's um, uh, just pointing out that um, we can try and do these things, and it's nice that we do, but uh, in, in reality, um, I've got my misgivings about how much difference that ultimately makes in the big picture. Members, do I have any further debate before I hand you back to Councillor Maloney? I'm going to make a quick comment. Members, I enthusiastically support this because I note that only part of this initiative, this discussion is not entirely about apartment living, it's about residential living in the City of Adelaide. Now, that can be done in homes, that can be done in townhouses, that can be done in apartments. And members also, as you would see, there are more cranes on our skyline than what we have seen in decades, and there is more economic activity 
in our city than what we have seen in many, many years. We need to support it, in my opinion, by promoting it. It's a business critical component of being a capital city council, in my opinion. Councillor Corbell Moore, before I hand back to the mover, do you wish to make a comment? You had your hand up. Um, <coughs> Um, workshop. I do recall, Sorry, Councillor, I apologise. You've already spoken. You can ask a I'm, question. I'm asking a question. You can do. Um, I do recall when we had this at committee in workshop, I raised the idea of a try before you buy, which I don't see in here. And I do recognise that there's the opportunity within the City Living campaign around Google Ads and um, paid social, um, social networking ads and things like that. Is it possible to include something around the idea of try before you buy, because that was quite popular. I did receive quite a lot of interest from the broader community around that. So, you know, there's a question. Can I refer that to you, please? Yeah, through you, Lord Mayor, I do recall that conversation and we'll take that on notice and incorporate that for sure. Thanks. Thank you, CEO. Now, Councillor Milani, you moved the motion. I'm going back to you to sum up. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, just in summing up, um, Oh, my parting gift to this council will be that don't forget to measure the um, the, uh, the the response and the outcomes of the action plan against KPIs. Um, you have a residential growth action plan to boost residential growth, Councillor Martin. That's the whole point of it. Um, so I um, commend the work of the administration. I know they've put a lot of hard work into it and um, I wish them all the best with the, the um, campaigns. Councillor, I put this matters before you. Those in favour? Those against? We carry item 12.4. Thank you, Councillor Maloney. Members, item 12.5, there has been an inclusion into your recommendation of the words specifically referring to 88 O'Connell project, which you can see highlighted in yellow on the large screen to my right. So members, you have a recommendation before you. It is a one part recommendation. Do I have a mover? DLM moving as printed. Councillor Moran seconding. DLM, do you wish to speak to this matter? Lord Mayor, Certainly, Councillor Clarehan. Lord Mayor, I just uh, wish to declare a perceived conflict of interest given I live cl in close proximity. I do note that it's only asking council to note the terms of reference. However, for consistency, I'll remain in the room, but I'll refrain, refrain from voting. Thank you for your advising your fellow elected members, Councillor Clarehan. DLM, do you wish to speak to this matter? Uh, Councillor Moran, you seconded. Do you wish to speak to this matter? Members, I look to the floor. Councillor Wilkinson. Uh, a question to the administration. Does the, the uh, delegation to the CEO provide for the capacity for the new council to have any elected members or does it preclude that? CEO. Through Lord Mayor, it definitely provides capacity for the new council and will be returning to council when the election is complete. Thank you, members. Any further debate? Councillor Martin. Yeah, Lord Mayor, look, I won't be supporting this. Uh, the administration promised not only uh, the, uh, the terms of reference, but they also promised us that we would be able to have a say in the appointment of the, uh, the project reference group at the workshop. Yes, that was the undertaking, but that would come to us before there was an appointment, and there's nothing of that sort in there. But look, that said, in any case, uh, I understand that will now fall to the CEO and the Lord Mayor to work out who are going to be on this group. But it, it remains nevertheless a problem for me because the terms of reference include that we'll have a building of up to eight storeys on the site. That will be part of the project reference group's task to consider proposals for eight storeys on 88 O'Connell. And uh, we will have no real influence over that in any way. Um, now, I know that um, it's refuted, but the most likely outcome, because it is in the terms of reference, is that this group will recommend one of two options. That is, that we partner with someone to develop, or in my view, more likely, that we will sell it to a developer with our blessing for eight stories. And that is fraught, and I think Adelaide and North Adelaide deserves more certainty and a better outcome. Not least because the promised caveat that is to say that we will somehow determine that the buyer will put what we want on the site 
is impossible to Councillor, implement. you are approving or not approving the terms of reference for a project reference group. I'm saying to you, Lord Mayor, the terms of reference include eight storeys on 88 O'Connell Street with a caveat that we will somehow determine what's on the site. And I'm saying to you that we can't do that. Respectfully, Councillor, you've also debated this specifically as a prior matter in a prior council meeting. Well, I'm entitled to debate it uh, when it comes back again, aren't I? Thank you, Councillor. Uh, you're saying to me I'm not the Lord Mayor? No, Councillor, I'm just saying you have had this matter specifically debated by yourself and the Council Chamber about adopting the guiding principles for 88 O'Connell Street. There was a long and laborious debate and an important debate associated with that matter. Your fellow electors... Well, it was, have well, it was only decision. laborious because you wouldn't agree with me. Uh, Councillor, you, you now have the terms of reference of a project reference group... Lord, you. Lord Mayor, I Are will not be supporting not? this because I believe it will be a disaster for the people of North Adelaide and they deserve much better. Thank you, Councillor. Members, do I have any further debate? I take you back to your mover. Sum up, summed up. Members, I put this matter before you. Those in favour, those against, we carry. Thank you, Members. Now, Members, before I take you through a process of a number of items to potentially op lock. I am going to bring Councillor Corbell Moore's motion forward for the interests of the gallery. Yes, I know, Councillor. So, could I please item 15.4, Councillor Corbell Moore? Well, thank you. For thank you. So, if you could... so you have a second of a councillor Clearahan. The floor is yours, Councillor Corbell Moore. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, this motion on notice is seeking to secure continuity of access to a very important community asset, the Southwest Community Centre. Um, as we all know, we've been approached by a number of members of the Southwest community and the broader community. Um, around their alarm and concern and distress about the unknown future of the Southwest Community Centre. And that's the reason why I brought it into the chamber. It's to provide that continuity of access and assurance to the community that the much loved facility um, will continue to have a home in the Southwest. I think it's very, very important. We've heard a deputation from Sue and Jeff um, from Sweka tonight, and they also represent not just the Southwest community but broader Adelaide community because the Southwest Community Centre is utilised heavily by the Greater Adelaide. Um, and we do know how important it is, it's heavily utilised, and so I implore this council to please support this motion on behalf of the Southwest community. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Clarahan, you're seconding the motion. Do you wish to speak to it? I'll reserve my right on there. Thank you, members. I look to the floor. Do we have any debate on this item? Councillor Maloney? Can I ask a question, Lord Mayor, because um, the comment says that the um, our current owners have not agreed to the request we've made to them, can I, which is part of the motion. So how can we ask for something that we've already asked for and they've said no? We'll take that as a question to the CEO. Thank you, Councillor Maloney. Claire, can you do it? Uh, through the presiding member, when we're alerted to the fact um, through trying to extend um, the current lease which runs out in March 2019 by the owner that they were planning to sell the property, we did ask them if we could then um, still um, get a five-year term on the building. Uh, that, that's what they refused to. So um, we're still tenants of that building until March 2019. Okay, members, before I hand you back to the mover, I'm going to make a comment. Oh, Councillor Clarehan? Certainly, no, please. Yeah, look, I, I totally support um, Councillor Cor Belmore's motion. Um, it is so important that a community that absolutely, well, is totally committed to this centre has worked hard to even get it established in the first instance and has shown to us just how successful it is. Um, it's important that we can offer some reassurance to the community that this council is committed to finding an alternative community centre if we cannot extend the lease. And um, I, I, community centres are so important in, in communities. Uh, having been involved in the establishment of the North Adelaide Community Centre, which will cel is celebrating its 20th year this year, um, I do wish the South West um, all the best 
in uh, continuing its fab fabulous work uh, in, in the southwest of the city. Um, they've already lost uh, a much utilised library uh, and we certainly need to ensure that there's no way at all that they will ever lose uh, the use of the Southwest Community Centre. Maybe it needs to be established in another location and we are already beginning our investigations to see if we can find a suitable location. But this is an absolute essential service that provides opportunities for the community to come together uh, to reassert their connectedness with, connectedness with the community and also to allow lifelong learning. Um, and, and I'm pleased that the administration has already indicated they're looking for other buildings. Thank you. Thank you. Members, no further debate. Councillor Wilkinson. I just would uh, thank Councillor Corbell for putting this motion. We've been asked by the community, so it's good that, 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 um, that Councillor Corbell has moved this. Uh, what I would love to see is if we could actually find some unlisted historic building that we could actually buy and save and provide a community centre and that would be an optimum outcome. But uh, certainly as a motion from the floor of council, it puts it in the, uh, in the uh, right before the administration to sort of look, look into this uh, issue in earnest because uh, it's obviously getting quite critical. Thank you. Thank you. Deputy Lord Mayor and the CEO would like to make a comment. DLM. Um, thank you, Lord Mayor. Uh, look, I was also going to commend uh, Councillor Corbyn Moore. Um, uh, it's just down the road from where um, Windmill Theatre is located, so I used to uh, pop in there a bit. Um, and I do think that there are um, some obviously um, places that we can look at in that southwest corner. Um, I do note that we've only got until March 31st, so I just ask that. Um, administration make a priority to see what leases we can have a look in the area. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. CEO, you would like to make a comment? Yeah, three of them. Just, just to recap, administration has received numerous emails from affected, affected residents and um, we have both our property team and our community team working on this as a priority because I understand the importance. Um, I'm happy to comply with the resolution of council as best we can and if necessary report back to council. So we are definitely on to it. I just wanted to give you that reassurance. Thank you, CEO. Councillor Corbell Moore, you're summing up. Thank you, summed up. Members, I put this matter before you 15.4. Those in favour? Those against? Carried 15.4. Thank you, members. Members, I'm going to do a call over now. I'm going to do items 12.6 through to 12.12. 12 .12. So, members, if you would like to debate any of these matters, please put your hand up. The first is 12.6, review, review of the Adelaide Parklands Charter. The next one is item 12.7, proposal for Archie's Clubhouse. Councillor Martin. The next item, members, is 12.8, preliminary end of year financial performance report. Members, the next item is 12.9, Term of Office Report. Members, the next item is 12.10, End of Term Function. Members, the next item is 12.11, Strategic Plan and Integrated Business Plan Reporting Quarter 4. Members, the next item is 12.12, .12, Quarterly Open Council Decision Update. Okay, so thank you, members. Now, I'm going to then put to you on block the following items. 12.6, 12.9, 12.10, 12.11, 12 12.12. So I need a mover, moved by Councillor Clarehan, seconded by Councillor Milani. I put this directly before you, those in favour, those against. We've just carried 6, 9, 10, 11 and 12, which members takes me directly to item 12.7. Councillor Martin. Yeah, thank you, Lord Mayor. I'd like to propose an amendment. Uh, an alternative motion, rather, which was uh, forwarded to um, the committee secretariat. And it's not up there. Councillor, you've provided this in advance? 
this afternoon on meetings. Okay, could you read it to your fellow elected members why it's being typed, please? Yeah, sure. Um, the, uh, number one is as is, uh, which is notes the results of the public consultation administered by Council's USA website from the 18th of July to the 8th of August 2018 as at attachment B to item 12.7 on the agenda for the meeting of Council held on the 28th of August 2018. Two, approves the Archie's Clubhouse event to operate with amplified music and entertainment until 10 p.m. Sunday to Thursday and until 11 p.m. Fridays and Saturdays and with non-amplified music or entertainment from 10 p.m. to 11 p.m. Sunday to Thursday and after 11 p.m. until 2 a.m. on Saturday evening, Sunday morning. Three, is that too fast or have you got it there? So you've got it, okay, great. Three, authorizes the CEO to enter into appropriate arrangements to grant the right of use to the Adelaide Pontoon Proprietary Limited to hold the proposed Archie's Clubhouse event at the Pontoon on the River Torrens, Karawira Parry, adjacent to Elder Park during November and December 2018, as per the event management approach included in Attachment A to Item 12.7 for the meeting of the Council held on the 28th of August 2018, except for the variations at two above. <laughs> Now, Council, I just want to ensure that your fellow elected members know what they're debating. Sure. <coughs> members, are you confident as to what you're debating, or do you want to wait until this is fully captured on the screen? Can we defer it to meeting? You can ask a question, Council Malani, at this point in time. Let me ask us a question of clarification. Um, doesn't our event noise mitigation strategy, whatever it's called, exactly look look at the amplification of music? Isn't that a separate uh, matter? Lord, Lord Mayor, the is council it, is it, debating it. I'd like to know. It's a separate. It's a policy. I'd like Councilor to Councillor Martin, I'm taking this as a question as uh, whilst your motion is whilst your turn up motion has been captured, and because I'll seek a the, second the and you can. Well, I, I can explain that, Lord Mayor. So Councillor, the question is not directed at yourself, Councillor Maloney. My question is because this is referring to music, which I think is a separate um, I, uh, com policy. Can can I that if that policy would be in place in regard to that in regard to music? So I need clarification on that, please. Take that as a question, CEO. Yeah, thanks, Claire. Uh, through the presiding member, um, yes, our, um, this event will trigger uh, the use of our. Um, operating procedures in relation to noise, noise management. This is classified as a temporary multi-day venue and uh, noise will be managed. Um, it's proposed within uh, the, the constraints currently set out within that. Um, so does policy. this does this motion go against our existing policy? I just have a yes or no. Look, she's debating it. Okay. Councillor, I'll just procedurally please just accept the motion and the seconder and she can debate. Director Mockler, I'll just enable you to say yes or no to that, then I'll go back to Councillor Martin. Is it a question of clarification of the It's not quite a yes or no answer. Noise is permitted beyond 11 p.m. Okay, Councillor, you may then debate that more fully Thank during the purpose of this. Now, Councillor Martin. What you are requesting, is it fully captured on the screen? Uh, Lord Mayor, I'll have a look. That's a very tiny screen at this distance. Oh, that's a bit better, thank you. Yep, that's fine. Okay, so members, you are now debating or about to debate an alternate motion, but we need a seconder before that happens. Do we have one? You do, Councillor Perihan, Councillor Martin, the floor is yours. You've put an alternate motion forth. Yeah, thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, look, the, the issue for many residents of North Adelaide is that there is substantial noise from that area created by events. Uh, there was reference by Councillor Milani to uh, noise monitoring procedures which didn't uh, work to the satisfaction of residents of North Adelaide during the festival fringe period 
that uh, passed most recently. In fact, our standard operating guidelines are under review because there were 64 breaches during the course of the Fringe and the Festival that were recorded. 64 is correct? Uh, most of them were remedied within 15 minutes. But if you're woken at 1 a.m. with uh, considerable noise, as many residents are in North Adelaide, it's not much consolation to know that the problem will be solved in 15 minutes. This motion seeks to allow the event. It seeks to encourage an entrepreneur to go out and create an event. But what it also seeks to do is to strike a happy balance between residential amenity and uh, commercial activity. And it will allow, provided that uh, this uh, motion is adopted, uh, full on doof doof until late at night. And then it's proposed in that motion that there be something of the order of acoustic music or non-amplified entertainment. Now, amplification is a term that is understood widely. It means something which is magnified through a speaker. Um, with this motion, the event organisers would be allowed on every night, including a Monday night, a Tuesday night, a Wednesday night, or whatever night they wish, uh, to provide that level of noise until 10 p.m. And then after that, they are required to go to something that is less noisy that's going to create fewer problems uh, for residential amenity. And I might add, Lord Mayor, um, I, I do feel, as an aside, I do, do feel some concern for hospitality in North Adelaide, which will unquestionably suffer as a consequence of this. And I know it's not often considered in this chamber, but every time we approve one of these events, some of the hospitality businesses in North Adelaide say, don't do it, it's ruining our business. Now, that to one side, I, I accept that there is a need for activation of the riverbank and this will do that. But it will provide uh, a chance for residents to get some sleep. And in fact, uh, I, I noticed that uh, it's promised that one of the features of this event will be that there will be an abstract uh, home setting created. Now, it would be really good if they created what it would really be like in a home in North Adelaide if there is pounding music until 1am. Can I just observe that the original proposal, Lord Mayor, doesn't even meet our guidelines. We actually have an APEM, which is about Adelaide Parklands events. And it says in here that uh, the operating hours uh, for weekdays uh, will cease- Still three minutes, minutes. Councillor. Well, Lord Mayor, I don't seek any extra time. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Your seconder was Councillor Clarehan, then I'll go to Councillor Maloney. Councillor Clarehan, do you wish to speak to this panel? Thank you. Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, I think this is a great idea to activate the, um, the Palais, which uh, turned out to be a bit of a white elephant to us. Um, and the concept is very appealing. Um, but again, the, my only concern really is about the impacts on the nearby residential areas. And because of where it's located, the noise does travel up, up the bank into the residential areas of North Adelaide. And whether they impact on the height, I'm not quite sure. But um, when we were visiting the Royal Croquet Club, I think a number of councillors last year, uh, there was very loud music and people were blaming the Royal Croquet Club for a lot of that noise. But in fact, it wasn't necessarily the Royal Croquet Club, it was also the Palais. And it was the amplified music that was driving everyone nuts with the doof doof. Um, because that's what seems to carry the most is the bass. I've never had an issue with volume at all, ever but the doof doof will turn me into a mad woman. Um, and I've been known to gate crash parties in my pajamas to tell them to shut it down. So, um, you know, in all reasonableness, I think this is, this is fair um, if it complies with our, um, our parklands policy, again, that's even better. So I'd love to see the event go ahead but certainly um, on, the, on the condition that, um, that this is not going to create issues. And of course, 
acoustic music and entertainment that isn't amplified and isn't going to be an interruption may be a challenge, but there you go. It could be an opportunity as well. Councillor Malani. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, Lord Mayor, I'll foreshadow the original recommendation because I think um, what Councillor Martin's doing here, apart from trying to just win over a few people um, in, his, uh, his, in, in his ward, um, I think what the uh, real issue here is um, number one, he, number 64, we, we can't, we don't know necessarily where the source of those. Um, that feedback was based on a number of events being in that precinct. But the thing I, I, what I don't like about this, and I think Councillor Clarahan is right, it does give the approval and it, it does make some sense, but you fix the policy, not target one individual event. The policy is what derives the guidelines around noise mitigation. And Councillor Moran has already um, got a motion up about that tonight. Um, you, you fix the policy so that everyone works to the same policy rather than just picking one event over another. I thought the deputation tonight from um, the, the, I'm sorry, I forgot his name, was, was really lovely. It sounds like a really great event that they're going to put on. But let's make sure if we're going to um, discuss the problem of noise, we do it for everyone. We do it in a way that there are guidelines that are clear and everyone knows what they have to adhere to. We're using some random, non-amplified, amplified terms. The policy details that. That's where that detail should sit, not within a specific motion that targets one um, um, one venue on, on certain nights. Let's make it um, that it's mitigated for um, all events and for one, you know, uh, that sets a, a policy and criteria that's clear that everyone's happy with, residents and also those that are investing in, in these events. So just, to clear, just to confirm, I move on foreshadowing the original. So I urge everyone to vote against this amendment. We'll turn a motion. Thank you, Councillor Mulani. Thank you, Councillor Slama. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I'll also be voting against this motion. Um, I'll take on board Councillor Martin and Councillor Clarahan's um, representation of North Adelaide residents. Okay. Granted. And this, 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 this one's on my side of the river. This is not Pinky Flat, which was on your side. This one's on but Central, but Central but Ward side. The speaker's mind facing the way, but that doesn't matter. So I want to talk for the Central Ward, uh, uh, on behalf of the Central Ward, Lord Mayor, and this is a great event. And we're talking 12 days out of 365 days of the year. I, I, I don't read Doof Doof in here. I read, include interactive exhibition, local music, pop-up comedy, cult mo uh, movies, local food bar and outlets. Bring it on, more of it. Thank you, Councillor. Members, do I have any further debate on this matter? Members, I'm Councillor Corbell Moore. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I've just got a question. When the Royal Croquet Club was at Victoria Square, what time did that finish? When did that, just off, I know that's not, you don't have a late information. Victoria Square. I'll take that as a question. Victoria Square, is that your question? And in Victoria yeah. Square, Councillor yeah. Corbell Moore, see you. Um, oh, I'm having to um, go back to the depths of my memory. I've got a feeling um, the operating hours were less than in other parkland areas such as um, Rymel or Randall Park or the Riverbank Precinct. I think it might have been 1 a.m., um, but I'd need to follow up council and provide that um, correctly for you tomorrow. Okay, and I was also interested in. Um, down like the garden for example what kind of operating hours do they have because these are areas which are also impacted by residential accommodation and hotels um, and i'm just interested because that information isn't necessarily here um, through the presiding member, that's 3am. Um, and just for clarification, when Council last reviewed the Adelaide Parklands Events Management Policy um, and when they um, gave long-term um, licence holders a five-year licence agreement, um, operating hours were locked in for all those um, major events. Um, and Council did ask us to bring back to Council for their decision anything after midnight, any new event that takes place in the parklands after midnight, which is why we brought this to you tonight. Okay, thank you. Look, I am, I'm going to support um, the substantive 
um, as in the original motion and not this, um, just on the basis that I agree with Councillor Milani um, in that we this is within our existing guidelines for the for the um, use of Elder Park and we have to have a look at cons consistent approach across the use of um, the parklands in our squares within the city. And this, this is no different. The use of Elder Park, it needs to be activated. I, I campaigned on city vibrancy and activation, so that's important to me. It is central ward, it's closer to central than it is to north, and um, it's the north ward councillors seeking representation here. Um, so I, I'm inclined to agree with Councillor Slama. I will I'm not be supporting this. Thank you, members. I'm going to Councillor Abiyad. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I'll speak briefly to this. Um, I do not support the current motion before us as put by Councillor Martin, and I support the, uh, uh, the original recommendation. Um, again, look, it's important. There's a, a, a very clear distinction between representation and leadership, Lord Mayor. Uh, representation is through a survey, um, and I don't want to hear regurgitation from councillors responding of 19 people uh, that are ratepayers in the city of Adelaide, that four, five or six of them have a concern with a specific event. We need leadership in our city. We need people to be able to represent their wards in leadership form, to go out and engage with people that I know that live in North Adelaide, that love these events because they're very close to their homes. They engage with them, they're involved with them. I understand there's a level of disruption for some ratepayers and I'm not discounting that, but that is a challenge of living in a city. <coughs> And that will continue to be the challenge of living in the city. We are aiming to increase our residential population. We're aiming to increase level of engagement of community. We're aiming to increase tourism. We're aiming to increase events in the city. And all of that is going to create more disruption and more noise. So in essence, what the city looks like in the future needs to be one of inclusive, but also needs to be one of comfort, but not at the cost for the majority when the minority are uncomfortable. I think it's really important that we leverage that, especially when we're talking about 12 days, we're talking about an active and festive part of the year. Uh, we're not launching this event at a time where it's really quiet in Adelaide and we're deciding to activate that site. Uh, so look, there is a level of expectation and leeway there which how we can manage that. Um, and I've seen this issue with the East End over and over again, where I've had constituents in the East End with the French Club and others that have called me up and have had a a big issue about events going up to three in the morning, and I'm quite sympathetic to it, but most of them have become quite understanding to the level of economic and social impact those type of events have on the precinct, because it does add value to visitation, uh, and it does also add value to the businesses. Uh, in this case, it will be a similar proposition. And what I really like about this is the level of innovation and entrepreneurship that the applicants have put through this. They've been really creative um, and they're really thinking outside the square. They're not just running a, a club uh, on the uh, on the pontoon. They're really thinking creatively. And a real valid point that I've really connected with was what are we doing to attract youth and retain youth in our city um, and some of the younger generations that would like to be more involved in these type of events. And this is exactly what we need to see. We need to see the high end, we need to see this, uh, and that's what an inclusive city is all about. Some of us will have to make sacrifices along the way for others, and that's what it's all about, to live in a city and be harmonious together. And I'd ask members to not support this motion and support the original. Thank you, councillors. I will comment before I hand you back to the mover. Members, I echo that sentiment. <coughs> the, uh, I think the, the residents of North Adelaide, in terms of their concerns about noise, I think this matter has largely been addressed because the RCC is moving to the University of Adelaide. So I suggest this is somewhat of a this is somewhat of a moot point, members. I would suggest. So the uh, I commend uh, Mr. Raphael in terms of his entrepreneurship and his creativity in terms of this event. I think it's entirely appropriate. After all, members, it is the Riverbank Entertainment Zone. Last time I looked, uh, and we do have, of course, um, noise uh, mitigation policies in place already, which our staff will duly exercise if this is too loud in any, any instances. And I take comfort from that. I take you back to the mover of the alternate motion, Councillor Mark. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. And look, I do understand Councillor Abiat does receive complaints from Central Ward residents about noise from events like the Fringe. They ring him up and he says, I can't hear anything. That's because he lives at Unley. You can't hear a bloody thing at Unley. The noise that comes from these events here on the riverbank is a problem for residents. Now, Lord Mayor, I, I don't think that Councillor Abiat's been paying much attention tonight. He talked oh, about five, five, five people who complained, and yet we had a deputation and Councillor Moran presented a petition 
a petition from residents of North Adelaide saying we have problems with noise. He's forgotten that. He's also forgotten that this is not a 12-day event. If he read his papers, he'd see it's an eight-week event. It's an eight-week event. Now, I commend the entrepreneur. I think this is a sensational thing to be doing, to be activating the riverbank. But in this instance, we need to be careful that we don't impinge upon residential amenity. To address Councillor Milani's point about policy, there is no policy on the riverbank. Our policy applies to either side of the riverbank, but not the riverbank. There's no policy on the riverbank in the river, which is where the pontoon is. This seeks to provide some guidance to council. It, it provides an alternative. It allows the event to proceed, but it pays some respect to the people who came here because those standard operating guidelines in which the Lord Mayor has such faith aren't working. Otherwise, they wouldn't be making these petitions and coming to council saying, please help us. There is a problem, and we acknowledge that. We're reviewing those standard operating guidelines as we speak to try and make them work better than they are, but they won't be in place by the time this comes on. We need to make sure that by sticking to those kinds of hours, with those kinds of provisions, we encourage the event, but provide some comfort to our residents. It's not unreasonable for them to expect a reasonable night's sleep. Please support them. Members, I put this matter before you as moved by Councillor Martin. Those in favour? Yes. Those against? So members, the motion fails. Those members voting in favour of the motion, please rise. Councillor Martin, Councillor Clarehan. Declared against. Lord Mayor, I move this Lamani, You foreshadowed, the floor is yours. Move is printed. Move is seconded by Councillor Abiyo. Councillor Martin, do you wish to speak to I the matter? I don't my right. I think we've had the discussion. Let's just move on with the rest of the agenda. Councillor Abiyo, do you second it? Do you wish to speak to the matter? Members, I look to you. I don't see any hands. I go back to you as the mover. Summed up. Members, I put this matter before you. Those in favour? Those against? Motion carried. Okay. Members, I now put item 12.8, which is page 119 of your papers, 2017-18 preliminary end of year financial performance report. Members, you have a seven part recommendation. Councillor Martin, you wanted this matter drawn out? Yeah, yeah I'm happy to move as printed, Lord Mayor. Moving as printed? I pulled it out. Let me look for a seconder before you discuss. Councillor Milani is your seconder. Councillor Martin, you'd like to ask questions? Um, no, Lord Mayor, I, uh, I just wanted to observe that, uh, for the sake of members, that this proposal includes funding for $1.8 million of new project, projects and uh, the defunding through cuts and savings of 12 projects, including a city transformation project. Now, I don't have any particular problem with those, but uh, I do have a problem with the way in which we are, without without much debate, transferring funds around the place, including $2.4 million to pay off debt, um, uh, without much consideration. But additionally, uh, and this is the thing about which I'm most concerned, the carry forwards keep blowing out. Um, you know, we've already moved $22 million to, uh, to this year. Uh, it's being added to uh, by another $6 million. And we're even uh, transferring uh, money from projects into 2019-20. Uh, now, I, I do understand the administration says these are projects that go over multiple years, but the problem is when you are not completing even basic projects, like, for example, uh, the matter that Councillor Clearahan raised with Bolton Street, which uh, has been on the agenda for so long that both she and I are embarrassed to walk down Bolton Street because the works that were promised so long ago have been completed, it does become a problem. And I wonder if the administration would give some consideration to uh, oversight of projects so that we ensure that we don't have as many carry forwards. Um, it is a serious problem. Thank you, Councillor. I'll take that as a comment. Uh, Councillor Milani, you seconded? No, Members, I look to you. Councillor Martin, back to you to sum up. Sum up, Lord Mayor. Members, I put this matter before you. Those in favour? Those against? We carry item 12.8, which takes us directly, members, onto item 12.13, 
the balance of those items were carried on block. So 12.13, which is 2018 LGA annual general meeting. Members, I need a procedural motion first of all, and then I need someone to move a motion to nominate someone to vote on your behalf. Councillor Abia, procedural motion, moving. Seconded by Councillor Milani. Do I have any debate about the procedural motion? I presume that I don't, so I'm going to put that matter directly before you, members. Those in favour? Those against, we carry. Now, members, in order to have a voting delegate for the LGA AGM, DLM. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I'd like to nominate the Lord Mayor. Uh, I will accept if uh, voted accordingly. I don't think I'll need a proxy, Councillor Clarahan, but should the Chamber wish to have one, they can. So, Members, any further nominations? There are none, so I'll now need a motion. Moved by Councillor Clarahan, seconded by Councillor Slama. Any debate, Members? All those in favour? Anyone against? Carried. I shall represent you, Members. Thank you very much. Members, I will now take you, that concludes that block of matters. The members, I take you on to emerging key risks of which there are nil. So I take you to question on notice from Councillor Martin. Councillor Martin, would you like your question taken as read? I'd be happy for you uh, uh, to read it, Lord Mayor. Although, um, uh, and I don't wish to embarrass you, but if you think there's a problem with you uh, delivering that response, I'm happy for the CEO to do it. Uh, no embarrassment, Councillor Martin, just standard protocol. So given that this is over the length of one page, the Lord Mayor customarily would not read this question nor the answer. So members, I will take this as read. If anyone from the general public would like a copy of this, this can be made available to you. Members, I now take you to questions without notice. Do we have any? Yes, Lord Mayor, we do, thank you. Um, just following on from that um, previous question that was just asked, and. I think you're probably disappointed you didn't read it out, but um, I'd like to just ask a further question of clarification. Is sharing of election costs, otherwise referred to in the last question as defraying of costs by Councillor Martin, um, so to explain this, as Councillor Martin in the last election did share a um, cost of letterboxing and mail outs with Lord, myself Lord and Mayor, with Lord other Mayor. candidates. I'm just curious just to know. Councillor, there is a question is that, being asked. Is that, Can you please refrain? Councillor Milani, please continue asking the question without notice. You're blocking my mic. Um, I would like to know that given that Councillor Martin in the last election did share costs of letterboxing and mail outs with myself and a group of Team Adelaide candidates, um, why is it, uh, is, is it not permitted during a campaign? I thought that would just be campaigning. Thank you, Councillor Mullaney. Sounds like a very pertinent question. Um, CEO, would you be able to assist? Through Lord Mayor, there is nothing to prevent um, that sort of activity occurring that I'm aware of. Question, Lord Mayor. Oh, Thank you, Councillor Martin. Question without notice, is that what you're doing? Yes, it's uh, no, it's a subsequent to the, the question on which uh, Councillor Mullaney uh, pr proceeded. Councillor Martin, I need a question without notice. It's, or, it's or all right, it's enough. a question without notice. Could I ask the administration, were the questions that were supplied to them, for which the Lord Mayor was unable to read the response because of its duration, was the questions, were the questions that were put to the administration about sharing election costs or about the use of council resources by any elected member to recruit or to re seek to recruit candidates to any faction? Point two of your question was. CEO. Well, I'm not sure what the question was. Oh, well, uh, the question was simply, was that set of questions about sharing campaign costs yeah. or about the use of camp, uh, uh, council resources? Yes, point two of your question. The brain of council costs. Maybe you should read out the question on there. Councillor, can I assist the chamber? Yes, Lord. Point two of your question on notice was, could the administration advise if the conduct referred to in paragraph one, if it occurred, included any request for funds or the securing of funds to defray common election costs? Mm 
if it also occurred, be assessed under Section 22 of the Local Government Act as constituting a gain of personal advantage. It would seem that Councillor Milani's question without notice was pertaining to point two. Well, Lord Mayor, you can't, you can't read point two without reading paragraph one. It says, could the administration advise if council resources defined by the LGA model caretaker policy to include facilities such as offices or meeting rooms were used by any elected member to recruit or to seek to recruit candidates to the so-called Team Adelaide faction or any similar... Councillor, I must ask you, are you council debating council. or ask you... No, or that's are, the question. Or, I'll ask you, or are you asking a question without notice? What are you doing? I'm asking the Lord Mayor the question, how, how is the, that question in the context of that? This is about council resources, is it not? Our CEO will answer that question. Um, three, Lord Mayor. The interpretation in relation to point two in the response, it does refer to the defraying of common election costs, but it is actually in the context of paragraph one, which is about the use of council resources. But it does refer and could be could be interpreted by the nature of where the um, commas are and the reference to the defraying of costs to have been in relation to that as well. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't see the comma there. Thank you, Councillor. My, my you question, Lord Mayor, is if I'm, if I'm to read, um, when I read a question on notice, if I read point one and I think no, am I not meant to read point question number two as part of the same question? Councillor, I'm looking for a question. This is, this is not a debate. I'm looking for a question without notice. No, I'm just, Do my I question have? is I'm, I'm assuming I'm meant to read the whole entire question when a question comes in our, in our papers. Certainly, Councillor. Members, do I have any further questions without notice? Otherwise, I'm going to continue on with this meeting. Councillor Martin, this is not a game of table tennis. No, I haven't got the bat. Um, uh, let me just I'm the presiding you, member, Councillor Martin. I have the bat. And uh, I have no doubt you will, but Lord Mayor. Um, the advertiser published an article on the 24th of August in which you, Lord Mayor, vowed to, to fulfil your mission you said you'd fixed much of the dysfunction that's plagued council previously. Could the Lord Mayor describe that dysfunction and how he fixed it? What specific actions he took? Councillor, I'll take that on notice, but I think this dysfunction has been self-evident in this chamber this evening, so I will take it on notice, we will move on. <laughs> now, members, in absence of any further... Lord Mayor, can I ask a question? You can ask a question without notice, Councillor Clarehan. Yes? Yes. Lord Mayor, I've read this, but I'm still not clear um, about the former uh, question on notice from Councillor Martin. Um, I've been informed that a particular councillor has used council officers and council staff to organise meetings of potential candidates to meet in these council rooms. Allow now, me to interject. You've received a response from the administration to Councillor Martin's question on notice that has been accepted. In absence of a further question without notice, I'm going to move this matter on. Lord Mayor, is it saying that no, this hasn't happened? Is that what the response is written here? Is it saying this has not occurred? I'll refer that to the CEO. Through you, Lord Mayor, the first sentence says that we're not aware. That's, that's the words. So what does it require for me to knock on your door and tell you, does it? That this has happened? Councillor, you may refer this matter to the CEO post this meeting should you wish. This is now turning into a debate, members. Okay. We are now in well, question I, without I, notice. I'm clear now on the response. I couldn't quite understand it. So Thank you, members. I that I will need to go and visit the CEO. Thank you, members. Allow us to address this dysfunction and move this meeting forward. Lord Mayor, it's not a Now, discussion. members, the next item is motions on notice. Item 15.1, Councillor Moran, motion on notice regarding the review of event noise mitigation standard operating procedures. Page 163, Councillor Moran, the floor is yours. <laughs> um, the uh, people that put the, the petitioner, which has sworn this, are happy now, but I, I still... Councillor, allow me to find your seconder. Members, is this... Councillor Wilkinson is the second of Councillor Moran, the floor is yours. I'm still happy to move it in light of debate on, fur, on the, um, the pontoon deba debate, and I take Councillor Milani's point that the, um, the procedures have to be right, and if they're right, um, 
everything else will flow smoothly from that rather than picking one event. So I, I still recommend this to you. Um, I think a lot of times when North Adelaide complains, they're poo-hooed um, as, you know, this is something you have to put up with. Well, people do have the right to sleep in their beds. But also, um, I also uh, support violence in the city, as, as we all do. There's nothing, nothing particularly special about you doing that. We all, we all want a vibrant city. Um, but there is a very funny noise funnel effect that goes up from the Torrens. One street gets it. I, I never hear anything. But the streets on the uh, uh, east, north, south, where it funnels up, and some on Strangways Terrace, where it hits the bulwark of the uh, at the top of the escarpment, they they really do suffer from the noises coming up the valley. Um, and sometimes I, I don't think we don't look often enough at how we ask the event managers to position their their um, loudspeakers and so forth. So I think um, I would like this to uh, this review to go ahead and look at rather than just turning or turning sound off at a certain time and and uh, relying on that. I think we should have a more sophisticated review of where the speakers point. And what, and also what causes the sounds to go up that valley in such an unusual way, and feel like there's a party in the very next room, um, and then the house next door doesn't hear anything. So I, I, rec I commend this review to you. Thank you, Councillor Moran. Your second was Councillor Wilkinson. Do you wish to speak to the matter, Councillor? I thank Councillor Moran for um, for this. And as Councillor Marnie said, it's about looking at the procedure of this and, and learnings from uh, uh, from this. So, with the, for example, that pontoon uh, one, I hope that we'll get some learnings about the noise transmission from there through that uh, exercise and be able to manage these things to accommodate their vitality as well as their sleep. Thank you, Councillor. Members, any debate? Councillor Clearahan. Thank you. Yes, I'll support this. Um, I recall very, my very early work around managing noise uh, in relation to uh, residential precincts, which resulted in the development of the um, noise mitigation operating procedures. And I think it is something we just need to continually refine, because given the petition we received tonight, given the potential um, timing of the new um, venture on the Palais, um, it is something that needs to be continually addressed and, and monitored. Thank you, Councillor. Members, any further debate? Councillor Moran, summing up? No. Members, I put this matter before you. Those in favour? Those against? Item carried. That's 15.1. Members, item 15.2, Councillor Martin, motion and notice, Adelaide Holocaust Museum, page 165. Councillor Martin. Um, yes, thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I have a seconder. Councillor Slammer, is your seconder? The floor is yours, yours Councillor Martin. Yeah, thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, look, uh, Sydney and Melbourne have Holocaust museums, and the National War Memorial Museum in Canberra has a permanent public display, and each of these have been supported in one way or another by a tier of government, either uh, federal, state, or local. Uh, the proposal here, which the administration has agreed to provide a recommendation on in QF1, will bring a Holocaust Museum and Education Centre to Adelaide. Um, the initiative has been funded by donations of several hundred thousand dollars uh, and is supported by the Catholic Church in Adelaide, which has agreed to provide uh, the premises at Fennessy House in Wakefield Street to the museum at a peppercorn rent. Now, uh, I'm pleased to put this forward, not only because this facility will provide an educated purpose, but it will also remind people of uh, the horror of the Holocaust, and it will also serve as a, uh, a museum to genocide generally throughout the world. It is the intention of the uh, proponents to have a, uh, a range of exhibits featuring uh, places where there has been genocide from Africa, South America, Europe, and hopefully closer to home. Um, and the uh, support the organizing committee has requested of us is to provide assistance to create an app to allow visitors to move about the museum and to find and understand the exhibits. Now, I note the administration says this is a private group. It is, in fact, a community group made up of members of the Jewish community in Adelaide. 
and I, I don't know where the information came from in the papers, but there will not be tickets required for this. It is a free museum open to everyone in the community who wishes to visit, and they are simply seeking our support uh, to establish this app to allow people to negotiate uh, the museum. It is consistent uh, with our, uh, our SMART uh, uh, goal, and it's also consistent with our expectations and goals for visitations to the city. Um, it is expected uh, that this facility will bring many people to the city of Adelaide, uh, from suburban Adelaide, from country South Australia, and from interstate, and therefore that will have a positive effect on visitations to the city. Um, Lord Mayor, this is a truly uh, fine community uh, uh, development and exhibit that will be a credit to this city, and I do hope that members can support the administration investigating and coming back with a recommendation in QF1 uh, to see if we can support what is a very small amount of money uh, to get this project going uh, so that the group can continue to operate it as a, a, a community volunteer enterprise. Councillor, your second was Councillor Slama. Councillor Slama, do you wish to speak to this matter? Reserving your right. Reserving your right. Deputy Lord Mayor. Uh, Lord Mayor, I wonder if I can ask a question of administration. Um, uh, it, given that the venture uh, doesn't require an entry fee, does that change their eligibility to apply for a grant in this instance? Through the society you. member, yes, it does. So um, we will take this um, on, um, take that on board tonight, and reassess against our community development grants. Um, so, given that uh, if it is a free entry and therefore they'd be eligible to apply for a grant, um, uh, do you still want to put the motion through? Because I think really what we should do is push it through to administration to apply for a grant. Um. Uh, uh, Lord Mayor, the purpose in raising this is because it is time sensitive uh, and through the normal processes um, they may not be helped in time. It is hoped that the facility will open in March and that means it needs to be established very early in the new year and there, need, uh, to be, there needs to be work done on the development of the app in Melbourne. Thank you for clarifying, Councillor Martin. DLM, do you wish to continue to ask questions with that regard? Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. So could I ask again of administration, is it possible to uh, to process a grant application in that time frame? Through the presiding member, the um, I've got a feeling the community development grants for 1819 um, were endorsed by Council of this quantum back in June this year. So there might be an opportunity if there's funding left to assess as part of round two, the time frame of which is later in the financial year. Um, a quick response grant is to the value of $2,000 and we can do that under CEO delegation. So, okay. Satisfied, DLM, your questions? Councillor Clarehan? Um, yes, thank you. Uh, I'm just wondering, is it possible for us to um, apply conditions to our grants that local companies are used um, rather than a Melbourne company? And the other question in relation to that is, if an app's already been developed, why are we paying in two other locations? Why are we paying money for the development by an interstate person for the same app. Through the presiding member, the full application and proposal um, was sent to me to provide administration comment on Thursday last week. We have not had time to do full due diligence. All our grants um, do um, have criteria and this, we need time to be able to assess against um, our existing criteria. Thank you, councillors. Members, any further debate on this matter? Councillor so Slama, you reserved your right. Are you speaking to it? No. Okay, I'm going to go back to the mover. Councillor Lord Mayor. Members, I'm putting this item before you, 15.2. Those in favour? Those against? 15.2 carries. Thank you, Lord Mayor. 
Members, I take you to item 15.3. Councillor Martin, motion on notice, North Adelaide Golf Club Master Plan, page 166. Uh, yes, Lord Mayor. Um, look, I, I note the administration's response, um, but this master plan is a fully formed... Councillor, I need a seconder before you can continue debating. Is there a seconder with regards to this matter, members? Councillor Clare, are you seconding this or not? Yes, I am. You are? You're seconding this matter, Councillor Martin? The floor is yours. Well, thank you, Lord Mayor. I, I did hear Councillor Abbeyard say this is not worth debating. This is worth debating. It is worth it being in the public arena, no matter how much he wants to hide it. Lord Mayor, this is a formal multi-document outline for the redevelopment of the Adelaide Golf Course. It was a recommendation. It came to council in confidence. It was ready to go to public consultation. That was how the matter came to us on the 24th of July. And so why, why are we unable to have it in the public arena? Where, 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 is, where is the problem? Um, it was deferred to allow for a workshop on several minor aspects related to uh, heritage elements. And there was a desire to uh, make investigations in regard to some cultural matters. Now that could have gone to workshops on the 7th of August. It could have gone to a workshop on the 21st of August. It could even come up on September 4th. But instead, it is remaining on hold in secret until after the election. Now, Lord Mayor, I, I do understand the need for confidentiality, but it is possible to re release part of that document. And the problem in not releasing it is that it's fueling gossip in the community. There are people who are saying, you're going to put a sports stadium there, you're going to put apartments on there. I even had someone say to me that there's a chance of another helipad going in the golf course. Now that's the kind of talk that's out there. Well, well, look, in fact, I've said you could be right and you could be wrong. You could be right, you could be right and you could be wrong, but I'm bound by confidentiality. I just can't tell you, I tell them. I, can't I, tell I can see that you're enjoying yourself, Councillor, but do you have an argument? No. Yes, the argument is that there is no justification for keeping this hidden from public view until after the election. It is a reasonable measure to release it to the general public to allow them to know what it is that we are contemplating. It would be wrong to go to an election and then for the matter to be revived after the election and say, surprise, here it is, when that option would have been available to us. We could have shared it with the community. Now, I, I ask the members to support a transparent and open council. That is all I'm asking for, transparency and openness, as opposed to this closed approach to documents that really can be in the public arena. Councillor Clarehan. Question of the CEO, Lord Mayor. Is it, is it possible to release some of the information without the um, commercial in confidence information? Could CEO, you I'd identify some, any issues with releasing some of the information? Three, Lord Mayor, the administration have provided a very clear response to the request. I can't give you any more information than that. I believe that it's important for Council to maintain confidentiality at this time until it's appropriate to release the information. That's where we stand with it, and I don't think I can give you any other advice than that. It's so, it's, so my question then is it's more than commercial yep. that it needs to remain in confidence? I believe so. And is that because of consultation requirements? No, there are issues with cost estimates and through future procurement arrangements. I think it's important for us to be very so clear. So there's, there's too much information there that doesn't allow it to, the, the master plan to be released? I believe that's the case. We, we're very aware as administration of the importance of being transparent whenever we can. Um, we wouldn't be providing this advice lightly, um, and it's something that's been very, very carefully considered. I can only encourage Council to, to accept the advice of the administration on, in the good faith that it's intended. Thank you. We a second. Thank you, Council. That would be your choice, Councillor Clarehan. In the meantime, I look to Councillor Malani. Are you withdrawing a second? No. 
Mm -hmm. Lord Mayor, I think it, you know it's really rough of a, an elected member to go out and say that um, that you know the rest of the council isn't supporting transparency to the electorate when it's plainly obvious that commercial and confidence for, for these types of projects is critical. It, it, it's, it's, it's a no-brainer, really. Um, and I think that the elected member has the responsibility of um, encouraging the public that they're going to have their say and that and not fueling rumours and innuendo, which doesn't make sense. It's, just, it's no different to the fact that you know, we'd love to have a, um, a more open conversation about the height on 88 Lacornia site, but we can't because of commercial incompetence. So I, I really urge members that we shouldn't even be having this debate. It's just Councillor Martin fueling the, his own electoral campaign. Councillor, Deputy Lord Mayor, followed by Councillor Wilkinson. DLM? We don't. Councillor Moran, then followed by Councillor Wilkinson. Thank yes. you, Councillor Wilson. Look, um, obviously nobody in their right mind can vote for this to come out when your CEO has said it's commercially in confidence. This is what the councils get sacked for doing. Um, if a ratepayer came up to me and said, oh my God, and I've heard that there's a helipad and they're filling the golf course with private apartments, I would not be saying, I can't tell you because it's confidence. I'd be saying, no, there is no plan to put a helipad in private apartments. To, to, to suggest that you're being cobbled in your freedom of speech to your electorate is, is um, disingenuous in the most repulsive way. Um, to, to, uh, I'm glad um, Councillor Malani brought up 88 O'Connell Street. I mean, it does this council no good to have the integrity um, of the other councillors um, with their hands tied behind their back in the debates to go and then say, I am a person of great integrity and transparency. All these people aren't because they are not going to break the law or go to the public on something that's been voted to be confidential. Um, so I, I, I think this does, the councillor that's moved this, absolutely no credit at all um, and I can assure ratepayers and people watching, there is no hurry for this. It is unbudgeted. Uh, the implication that we're going to spring something in the new council, you know, get it in before the new council, get real departments, helipads, da 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 da, and they're keeping it from you. There is absolutely no money to do this project for many, many years. So there is no hurry in the dying days of this council to put out thought bubbles um, and break uh, commercial confidentiality. There is no rush. We know change to that golf course for a long, long time. Lord Mayor, I'm happy to withdraw my seconding because I've just seen associated costings and I certainly don't agree with that. Well, if you withdraw your seconding, this motion collapses. You've withdrawn your seconding? I am. So I don't Members, we will move on. We no longer have a motion. Excellent support, Excellent support. Thank you. Good on you. Members, you have now dealt with item 15.3. You have already voted on item 15.4. So I now look to you on item 16, motions without notice. Councillor Martin. Yes, thank you, Lord Mayor. I have um, supplied the information to the Committee Secretary in uh, the event that I did need it. And the motion is that uh, Council requests the CEO um, to investigate the matters raised in questions on notice at 13.1 on the agenda of the Council meeting for August 28, 2018, in relation to the so-called Team Adelaide or any similar grouping contesting the coming Council election to determine whether there has been any breaches or breaches of section 62 and 783 of the Local Government Act and to provide a report not in confidence to the meeting of council on September 11th, 2018, together with advice if, in his opinion, the matter should be referred to another agency. Uh, members, just allow me to take some procedural advice on this motion. This is just shameless, shameless political grandstanding by a faction leader. This is extraordinary. Just allow me to take some advice. I'm a faction leader. I'm a faction leader. Sorry, Lord Mayor, can I? You heard it right there. It's been recorded. 
Through you, Lord Mayor, can I just say that um, should any council member have any concerns regarding this matter, <clears throat> bringing it to the chamber is not the correct mechanism. It is, it is quite feasible for any council member to come to see myself, to go and see the Ombudsman or to refer the matter to, to another authority. Yes, and that is the correct process, not bringing it to a council meeting. So I encourage anyone, if they have any concerns, as Councillor Carahan said earlier, come and see me if you wish to, wish to raise it or take it to another authority. That is the correct process. Members, well, on, that, on that basis, I disallow it. No, Lord Mayor, you can't disallow it. If I have proposed it and I have a seconder, and I think I do, then the matter is on the floor of council. Moreover, Lord Mayor, may I put it to you that uh, it may well be argued that people who are in this room contributing to this discussion have a conflict of interest. They, they cannot remain here to discuss this. Lord Mayor, this is serious. I am proposing a motion without notice for which there is a seconder the motion is probably no, constituted. Who's the seconder? Councillor Wilkinson uh, and I had a conversation and he indicated he'd support it for the purposes of the debate. Members, before you do anything, I'm going to take procedural advice as to whether I'm going to allow this motion in the first place. Look, me, you can't consider it. We've been told it's the wrong procedure. You should just report it to the CEO. You must be reading it. Wow. Okay, members, I've been advised that this matter is ultra vires because it is beyond the power of council to determine. If you have a concern, please share it with the appropriate authority. The appropriate authority, as denoted by the CEO, is not the City of Adelaide led by the CEO in terms of administration. That's the answer. My answer is final. We move on. Well, Lord Mayor, I, I dispute Councillor, that. I'm not asking for a debate. No, I, I'm disputing it. I want it on record that I dispute your conclusion. I don't know. Noted, Councillor. Next item, members. Now, members, could I please? Members, we have no further motions without notice. We don't. So, members, motions, please. <laughs> members, we have five items to debate in confidence. And I need separate motions for each of those to be debated in confidence. So 18.1.1, Appla advice, could I have a mover? Moved by Council Moran, seconded by the Deputy Lord Mayor. I'm gonna put that straight to the floor. All in favour? Against, carried. Item 18.2.1, Q4 Commercial and Business Operations Report. Moved by Council Moran, seconded by Councillor Wilkinson. Members, I put this matter before you, those in favour? Members, I need to see your hands, please. Those in favour? Thank you. Those against? Carried. Member, item 18.2.2, Torrens Water Licence. Can I have a mover? Moved by Councillor Moran, seconded by the DLM. I put that matter before you. Those in favour? Those against? We carry. Item 18.2.3, moved by Councillor Moran, seconded by Councillor Milani. I put that before you. Those in favour? Those against? We carry item 18.2.4, quarterly open confidential council decision update. Can I have a mover? DLM, seconded by Councillor Clarahan. I put that matter before you. Those in favour? Those against, carried. If we could please close the doors and move this meeting into confidence. Any persons not directly related to these matters? Thank you for your attendance, sir.
Thank you for your participation in this meeting. I formally declare this meeting closed at 9.01 p.m. on Tuesday, the 28th of August, 2018. Thank you, members. Thank you, CEO. Thank you, administration. Good night.